Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Oh, yeah. I am where I want to be, right here on my perch, overlooking the entire hip hop nation and pop culture at large. Welcome everybody to the Wendy Williams Experience. This Iman, she's got a book called The Beauty of Color. And I want her to autograph it. It's a beautiful coffee table book. How has she survived all these years? You know what I mean? You don't even hear about her fighting with any of the other models, like any cattiness. Like I wonder how Iman and Beverly Johnson got along back in the day. You know? I'm gonna ask her all that stuff. Hey, you know what we were listening to in the pink room? We were listening to Mary J. Blige's new C D. I have to tell you something. The pain in her voice, the old Mary is is what it is on, on this new CD. December 20th, look for Mary J. Blige's CD in stores. And um, and by the way, Mary, once again, good luck on being able to uh, star in the legendary jazz soul singer Nina Simone's story. Nina Simone passed away, you know, many years ago. Mary J. is going to bring her to life. Yes, very nice. Very nice. Our Don, where we're supposed to be hearing from him today for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Listen, let me tell you something. He is a comical mess, and I love him. And uh, he will not let me announce until he gives the thumbs up. And I've been trying to say, will you hurry up? I got nothing but best of shows going on next week. This is the last day of the week. Today is Friday. Next week, I can't announce anything. I'll be gone. I'm going on um, a business trip to Germany. Book business. <clears throat> and so, and I'll be gone for the whole week. So, you know, about, about um, uh, Beyonce and them girls. So, well, here's the deal. Kelly has been at all the award shows, as you know. Which, you know, I love Kelly. Kelly, don't get me wrong. I love you, girl. But um, being that we know you as a part of Destiny's Child, you going on stage is very lackluster. Very, where the hell is Beyonce? <laughs> but, you know, I, I hate to say it, because Kelly is a really nice girl and a great singer and a beautiful girl in her own right. But, Kelly, you give me the, that where the hell is Beyonce vibe. <laughs> and apparently, Beyonce, who accepted the award for the group alone at the American Music Awards, um, says, uh, well, you know, they're saying that Kelly and Michelle love Beyonce very much. But it, there's a bit of a conflict going on for the group. Michelle was very upset that... Um, whatever song... Uh, I don't know what song that they're talking about. Oh, the new single, Check On It, which uh, Beyonce just shot the video for. That's on the Destiny's Child CD. And so Michelle, who doesn't have a say in crap, <laughs> has the nerve to be upset that the song was placed on the Destiny's Child CD. And Kelly is hurt that Beyonce didn't make it to any of the award shows, leaving her out there by herself. Other reports are claiming that Kelly had no idea that Beyonce would not be the, at the American Music Awards. Whatever the outcome, the word is, is that um, Kelly and Michelle are upset with Beyonce. Michelle, you're not entitled to an opinion. You know, you just be happy that you are a part. Kelly, uh, that's your sister. So, you know, that's, that's, that's family business. Maybe you all can call in your daddy and, and he can help smooth this over. Shout out to Matthew. And Tina... You look terrific, woman. I mean, considering all you've been through. You know, that damn Matthew and whatnot. All oh, them tears. <laughs> and fears. And Michelle and Kelly, you should have known. Beyonce is an entity. She's busy. She does, you know, she doesn't have time. 
you know, when Destiny's Child disbanded, that was so that Beyonce didn't have to go and accept. Although I think it would have been nice if Beyonce showed up at the American Music Awards. Like they rode out together. Not just that last performance on Jimmy Kimmel. Not just, by the way, I have Jimmy Kimmel gossip. I'll tell you in a second. I know you don't care. Oh, or, okay. <laughs> I'll, te- I'll take 15 seconds of your life and then we'll move on. Uh, but I, I just think that it would have been nice if they wrote out not just, you know, the performance on Kimmel and not just this last album, but go through awards se- season together. Because Kelly by herself, Kelly would be great if we only knew her as Kelly by herself. But because we know her as Kelly with everybody else, it just kind of looks like Hamina, Hamina, Hamina. And Michelle, sit down. <laughs> <clears throat> I want to cater to you. Mm -hmm. So Kimmel and his girlfriend. Well, okay, keep that song going. But Kimmel and his girlfriend were at the Costco's. And they were buying two baskets overflowed with stuff. So he and his girlfriend get out to the parking lot and they start, you know, at Costco's, there's no bags or anything. You got to just throw everything in your car. So they're throwing the stuff in the car. They get to the second basket. They have no more room in the car. Kimmel is overheard saying, let's just leave it. You know, we have no room. Somebody will take it. And in the basket was the usual stuff that you buy at Costco's. Toilet paper, paper towels, you know, a lot of paper goods and stuff. Within 30 seconds of them pulling out of their parking space, the people who were in the parking lot descended on their basket like vultures. Ah! Exactly. And all that crap was dispensed uh, with the vultures. That's it. So it's good, good people. Let's just arbitrarily go to the phone, uh, Goose, and see what's going on. Hey. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Good. It's Wendy speaking. Who am I speaking with? Simone. Hi, Simone. Hi, Wendy. So what's going on, Simone? Talk to me. Talk to me. I'm at work. Okay. Yeah. Simone, please turn your radio down. I'm sorry. So you knew what you were doing. Hi. I did, I did, I did. <laughs> I'm so surprised I'm on the radio. <laughs> Hello? That's Simone, y'all. Wendy. Did she hang up? No, I hear her now. Hello? Wendy. She got the noise. Yes, Simone. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm finding you. Wendy, I'm trying to get some tickets. Oh for, to- oh, for the Don's Indeed. Why don't you just say that in the beginning, Simone? I don't know. I mean, you're dancing around the situation and everything. <laughs> <laughs> My girl, Simone. Uh-huh. Simone, you can find out. Oh, you're talking about the Johns and Divas extravaganza? Yeah. Okay. You can go to my website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com. I was bamboozled, hoodwinked, lied to. I was told originally that somebody had put all that information on my website. I was lied to, bamboozled, and hoodwinked. And I apologize to you all for going to my website and seeing absolutely nothing. Uh-huh. However, I got somebody else on the case, and the website is full of information. What borough do you live in? Um, Brooklyn. Okay, good. You'd be uh, getting your tickets from Ellen John's Barbershop or Philani Clothing. You can also just press the uh, buy tickets button on my The Wendy Williams Experience website and just get your tickets that way, okay? Okay. Now, w- do you want the number of Ellen John's Barbershop? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you ready, Simone? Yeah. All right. Uh, 718 718- Three eight five zero four four zero. Oh four four zero. Now let me give you the telephone number to Philani Clothing over there in Brooklyn. Okay. Seven one eight seven eight nine zero four six four. Zero four six four. Woman, I will see you December twenty second. What color dress are you going to wear? Black. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> because if you wore that beautiful red dress, you realize you look beautiful, but not up in here. Okay. Okay. And Simone, uh-huh. I, um, when you hear who our Don is, you're going to die, faint, resurrect, take a drink, put the dress on, die, faint again. Wow. Yeah. So do I have to pay for them? Uh, yes, Simone. I'm not giving away tickets now. Oh, good night. No, Simone. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. 
Yeah. All right. You. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna. I'm gonna call the uh, L. John's barbershop. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Like a true diva do. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye, Simone. Thank you. Yeah, we got tickets, uh, everybody. But uh, you know, you know, I just can't give them away arbitrarily like that. Um, gosh, what else? I can't wait to get to the Terrence Howard information. Uh, can you believe we're gossiping about Tevin Campbell? <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> All right, y'all. Keep it where you got it, because this is the place to be. You've got a lot of choices on your radio dial, and I absolutely, positively am aware of that. But I am so thankful that you choose to spend your quality time right here. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. All right. It's Wendy, man. I drove yesterday to get your book. That book is fire! <laughs> Yes, honey, you did it again, honey. You did it again. The Wendy Williams Experience. The stage is set for this year's WBLS party with a purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Just added Cameo. Cameo Live. Larry Blackman and Cameo. Along with Chai, Chai, Chai. Vivian Green. Green. Would have been somewhere with your friends. And Donnell Jones. Dress your best and follow the red carpet into a first class <laughs> night of fun in the Broadway ballroom of the Marriott Marquis Midtown, Saturday night, December 17th. Enjoy a full holiday buffet while DJ Chuck chill out. I'll drop it like it's hot. With my compadres, WBLS Air Personality. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey. Jackie Reed. Nephew Tommy. Hi, this is Ann Trim. Jordan. Hi. Hi, it's me, Wendy Williams. Now you leave your this is champagne. Oh, this is Hal Jackson. Along with special invited VIPs, you'll never know who might be in the house. Tickets available now at all Ticketmaster locations. Proceeds to benefit day one. Sponsored by Razak Hair Products, unparalleled advanced hair care. It's a party with a purpose from 107.5 WBLS. Oh, today's R&B and classic soul. The Wendy Williams Experience is on 107.5 WBLS. This hour of the show is brought to you by Five. Hey, what the hell is a Five? Jive, sorry. Oh, Jive. <laughs> oh, Jive. Jive Records. Jive Records. <laughs> All right, baby, you know. I'll speak Jive. <laughs> and shout out to everybody at Jive Records. Thank you for sponsoring this hour of the Wendy Williams Experience. Also, WBLS would like to thank all of you who joined us in coming together um, to the aid of the victims of Hurricane Katrina temporarily. Um, well, at a, at a real crossroads in their lives, these victims are. There are thousands of victims here in New York displaced, about to be out in the cold snow. And bitter freezing temperatures. This holiday season, New York, I know we can do better for them. In the spirit of giving, join me and my radio station. If you know a family in need, send a letter to WBLS. In the spirit of the holidays is the name of this. And I don't want to call it a contest, but that is the theme of this um, endeavor. In the spirit of the holidays, we need a letter from you. 3 Park Avenue is our address. The 41st floor. We're at the penthouse. <laughs> New York, New York, New York, 10016. You can always fax your letter to 212-447-5194. Do this by Monday, December 12th, please. WBLS continues to grant wishes to these victims to make their holidays a little brighter. Thank you. Let's go to the telephone. We're just picking up Aubrey. What are we short staffed today? Let me see. Mm -hmm. Hi, how are Shakira's you? Shakira's here with her Marlboros. <laughs> hello. And, uh, <laughs> hello. Hey, Wendy. It's huh. Rachel. Hi, Rachel. How you doing? Fine, thank you. How are you enjoying the snow? Rachel, I have to tell you something. You know, I know a lot of a lot of your favorites might have taken off today. Whatever. Um, I left the house this morning at seven thirty oh to get God. here for two o'clock. Amazing. Yeah. Well, well, I actually start work at nine, and I left. Around 8 o'clock, and I was the first one at my job. Were you? Yeah, and I felt like the cuckoo clock should have been going off because I was like, obvious. yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
because it's obvious that I didn't get the memo to <laughs> come into work later because everybody else but, needed it. But you know what, though, Rachel, um, even if your boss doesn't recognize you showing up, there's somebody who's recognize you, recognizing that. Or at the very least, don't you feel good that you came in when a lot of your coworkers took off today? No, not really. <laughs> oh. Well, see, I got Eye of the Tiger in my craft. I feel damn good. I was uh, I was behind the wheel. You know that theme when the Wicked Witch of the West took off on their own? dun 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 You're just leading the pack. Yo, I was leaned up, on, hugging the steering wheel. You know, the windshield wipers going 100,000 miles an hour. Right. I was skidding and sliding, but I was going to be here, doggone it. I was going to be here. I was going to make it. Because yeah, at, the end of the, at the end of the day, I, I figure that the people want their entertainment. They don't want a best of show. Well, of course. I mean, in your position, I know that it's difficult to come there, but I love to hear your voice. That's why I came. You're why I came. I pre you, Rachel, are why I came. I, I called my husband from uh, the car because he says, you know, call me when you get, you know, to the end right. of the neighborhood. Make and, sure you're and, safe. Yeah. Well, no, we, I had to call check on a few uh, accounts. Call me when you get to the end of the neighborhood. Then call <laughs> call me when you get, you know, to the main thoroughfare. All the major stops. Yeah. And and so as I called him, and then I said, you know, um, Kev, I, I still don't have it in me to take off after almost 20 years in this business and I've established myself in a certain way but I still treat days like this as if my boss is watching and as right. if I've only been on the job for a week and well, like that's that. How you, that's how you have loyal listeners too. Well, you know, I don't know. I'm I, loyal. I like to... I like it to, sounds like everyone else is loyal at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I like to... Well... I like to lead troops by example. Right. Like um, my my whole uh, support. Especially the interns. It's, and, and you know what? My whole support staff is here today okay. because I called each so and every one Friday. of them. Yeah. I called everyone while I was white knuckling the wheel, battling the snow early in the morning, you know, giving myself six hours for the commute. I was right. like, look, I'm coming in and I'm coming from the furthest. And I only live like 15 miles outside of the city. But I was like, I'm coming from the furthest and I'm coming in. So you don't even have to wonder whether the office is open today or not. Right. Yeah. You're setting the example. And the troops are here. And I love it. Hi. Yeah. So when? What's up with the diva tickets? The Dons and Divas, because I am a diva. Rachel, tell me more about you, sweetheart. Well, hon, I graduated. I got my master's in criminal justice. I'm 28, just trying to, I got a job, no kids, no boyfriend, just trying to do the damn thing out here. Here's the thing. I don't normally give away these tickets when people just call and ask for them. Right. And you but you could make an exception for me, can't you? Well, here's the thing. You came into work today. You were the first one at your job. I was. This, doing it for yourself and understanding what it takes to, to, to conquer. I want you at my party. Oh, my gosh, Wendy. I do. Thank you so much. I do. I do. Did you hear, uh, did you no, hear her, you. her rap? Yes. Thank you. Rachel? Well, I guess it's... I guess it was worthwhile then. Yes, it was. <laughs> and I'm glad that you called. See, like-minded people think alike. You know, you're at work. I'm at work. You know, doing it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, Rachel, where are you from, by the way? I'm actually from Stanford, Connecticut. Okay. But I am from the islands. Oh, are you? What island are you from? I'm from Barbados. I'm from Haiti. Oh, oh Haiti. Sock Passe. <laughs> All right. Well, hold on a moment, Rachel, and um, we're going to take your information behind the scenes. Whatever you do, don't hang up. As I'm a matter not going to hang up. Tell your coworkers not to hang up on me either. Yeah, you know what, Shakira? The best thing to do is to get Rachel's telephone number and then hot tail it around to promotion so we can get these giveaway sure. sheets going. Thank uh, you so much, Wendy, and, and keep up the great work. Rachel, if you get disconnected, Shakira is going to call, or one of the girls is going to call you back okay. to take your information. Sure. And I will see you on December 22nd. Um, and I can't wait, and I know I have to wear black. I was going to say, are you going to wear that beautiful chartreuse color dress? Oh, no, girl. <laughs> that night, I will be all in black. <laughs> Rachel, I love you. I love you, too, honey. Thank you. Take care, and hold on. Okay, sure. All right. I know I don't normally do it that yeah. way. But it was, it was sweet of you. But you want to know yeah, what? Because yeah. you know what? It was diligent of her. Yes. To come into work. And I realized that, that a lot of divas are running their own offices so they can take the day off and lay in the bed. But for us Indian divas, <laughs> an Indian diva is somebody who works for somebody else. You know, <laughs> they're not a chief diva. You know, you're not uh, Cynthia uh, Horner running your own magazine, you know. <laughs> I'm an Indian diva within the confines of being a chief. Like, like I got bosses, my ra my my cr radio crime bosses, you know. But then within that, I'm a chief over my people, 
And I just, uh, you know, I appreciate Rachel's conversation. And um, so, you know, that's why I gave her the passes. I'm sorry. <laughs> now everybody's going to be calling and saying, can I get the passes? But, you know, quite frankly, you got to spit good game. You got to spit. You got to be spitting the right. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> you got to let it do what it do. You got to spit the right game. Oh, I know that sounded terrible, right? I, I just, I just grab, grab my nose and like I'm still offended. Like I just came from the bathroom. I'm sorry. Um, what we probably need to do is continue on with the commercial yeah. break and um, and then come back and we're gonna you know talk about uh, a bunch of stuff today on the show. So I'm glad to be here. It's Friday. The sun is out in New York City. We survived the storm. One of our interns, Haley, though, did uh, careen off the side of the road. On her way to the train station, yeah. She's okay, but she called us to say she won't be in today for her internship. So, shout out to Hallie. And, um, you know, I hope everything is okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, take me out. Take me out. Take me out. Take me out. What's up? This is Jack A. Harry. What's up? This is your fabulous girl, Takara. What's up? This is Dr. Ian Smith, and you're listening to the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. <laughs> Perfect day for brown juice, just to take the chill off. Hey. <laughs> okay. China, I know you know it's good. Hey, everybody. So, um, congratulations once again to Snoop Dogg. I feel like I'm congratulating him on a regular basis here on this show. In case you haven't noticed, um, I happen to love Snoop. And um, he can put another feather in his cap because he's got a deal with XM Satellite Radio, uh, which he's had for a few years. He has been hosting his um, Welcome to the Church. Listen, C-H-U-U-C-H, Church, with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> that debuted uh, last December. <clears throat> now, the new um, exciting news for Snoop is that he is the executive producer of the Hip Hop Channel uh, for Satellite Radio, the Rhythm Channel. It, the, the, yeah. <clears throat> the hip hop channel is called The Rhythm and Snoop is going to be well this is what he says this is these are his words I am truly excited about being able to have total control over music and programming for The Rhythm on XM we need more Snoop Dogg music this is what he says <laughs> all the time because the music I play makes people feel good consider yourself a part of the new Snoop Dogg eargasm <clears throat> well enjoy it while you got it because the satellite radio grows they'll be getting true radio heads in there to program <clears throat> you know what I'm saying people like Thea Mitchum my crime boss in Philly you know People like Michael McGuire, my crime boss up in uh, Hartford. People like Vinnie Brown, my crime boss here. You know, but for right now, they're letting these these dudes do the damn thing, and <clears throat> I think that's that that's pretty good. Enjoy enjoy that job while you have it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh boy, Savoy Magazine, everybody is closing up shop. Well, you know. Who reads Savoy? I mean, and a shout out to Savoy Magazine, but aren't they in the same league as Ebony as far as the, the people they were trying to please? Yes. And Ebony Magazine, unfortunately, has been so much in black households for years that when we look to that type of magazine, we just pick up Ebony. It's a natural thing. When you want bleach, you pick up Clorox, <laughs> which is terrible. And when you and 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 do you call uh, Reynolds wrap Reynolds wrap or do you call it aluminum foil? <laughs> you you still call it Reynolds wrap even if it's not Reynolds brand, right? Right. right. There's right. certain branding that happens that you know not for nothing. Nobody else has a chance. So Savoy is closing up shop. It's a black lifestyle magazine. They launched in 1999 uh, by Vanguard Media. Um, you know. But they're not making money. And that's the bottom line. And shout out to the Source magazine. We got about, what, eight inches of snow in New York City. The sun is out now and the streets are getting clear. But the, the Source is busy moving. They've been kicked out of their office. The, well, the word is, is that they owed back rent. 
and you know they're in a financial way. However, I'm hearing the source. What the source is saying is that they they've elected to uh, vacate those premises and that they're moving downtown to Soho. So, you know, I love the Source magazine. The Source magazine is what they call the hip hop Bible. And I wish you all well. Um, I hate and it, I, I feel bad about having to talk about it. But you understand what I do for a living. Uh, so shout out to everybody at the Source magazine out there with your mittens and scarves on with the moving truck. <laughs> Uh, 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 yay. I don't know whether I say I'm sorry to hear about what happened or or good luck in your new venture. We didn't like those landlords anyway. <laughs> I, d I don't know what to say, so I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Who watched Making of the Band last night? Takeda, Dominique, Deshaun, Andrea, and Aubrey. Let's go to the telephone. Did anybody see Making of the Band last night? Did I have the winners down correctly? Hello? How are you? Hi, it's Wendy. Hey, Wendy. I'm calling from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. How are you? It's lovely to have you here. You know, I'm calling and I'm listening to you on my computer at work. Mm -hmm. And we get the delay uh -huh. on the computer. Mm -hmm. And trying to call in to win the tickets is kind of hard. Is there another way that listeners that listen online can call in to get the Dons and Diva tickets? Well, there would be no possible way for you to call in and actually win them. However, if you would like... And I'm going to tell you something. Yes. With with free booze the majority of the night. All right. And in New York City where a drink is costing you on the average $12. Sometimes you'll pay 16, sometimes you'll pay 8. But you know, you figure if you're at a party for say 5 hours, how many drinks are you going to drink? Oh, okay. You, will will you drink a fair amount of t uh, drinks? Absolutely. I'm oh. a lady of a certain age, of course. Okay. So then um and I'm single. And you're a diva. I'm a, and I'm a diva. So why wait to win? Because it's not going to happen from computer with delay. Why don't I just give you the telephone number so that you can purchase tickets for the Dons and Divas extravaganza? Thank you so very much. Okay. First, let me ask you, do you have a PayPal account? No, I don't. Do you have friends that order things from the web? I order things from the web. I don't need my friends. Okay. okay. Well, well, then that means that you have a PayPal account, right? So you don't have to be a subscriber to the to the email. Okay. Well, here's what you do. Okay. okay. How about how about this? Go to my website, the yeah. Wendy Williams Experience dot com. Okay. Now, because you live in Harrisburg, yes. you're not going to run into Brooklyn to pick up passes or, or Jersey or Queens oh, no, or whatever. no. My cousin's from Jersey, Palisade Avenue. Is, or is your cousin going to be going to the Dons and Divas with no, you? No, we're trying to win tickets together. Okay. Well, Diva, how mm -hmm. about if I give you the Jersey number, yes, you give it to your cousin, and your cousin cops these passes for you? Okay. Okay. Uh, two friends of mine, Race, and the other one is Qua. Their telephone number is 973. 973. 418. This is in New Jersey. 418. 3019. Then there's this fabulous clothing store in Montclair, New Jersey. They're selling tickets out of the store. Uh, tell your friend to call uh, the Heat Clothing Store at 973. 973. 509. 509. 3400. Because I've already got my Diane Von Furstenberg black dress ready. See, that's how a diva do. That, that is how a diva do. <laughs> And make sure to go on my website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com, to find other telephone numbers. You'll see some of the great sponsors for Dons and Divas. And, and, and just as a sidebar, if you go to paypal.com, you'll be able to pick up the passes that way. But if you go to my website, you'll see a little button that you can hit to purchase passes. Thank you so much, Miss Wendy, and thank you for taking the time out of your day do you and know, your family's day do to you, travel to work in the storm. Oh! Thank you for appreciating. Thank you so I much. Do. All right. And, and I'll see you December 22nd in New York City. Thank you, sweetie. Your DVF dress is black, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Fabulous. Rap dress. Okay. Oh, love that. Mm -hmm. Keep it here, everybody. Advice I, hours coming up. I'm looking for a type of job in which I can teach females how to give good professionals. I'm, I'm very interested in that. I'm very good at it. He needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy. It's really a trouble with a dude. I'm having a problem with my fiancé and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, oh. Always drama. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Fax Wendy at 866-WENDY-FAX. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm-hmm. Hey, everybody. Hey. 
Welcome, welcome to Advice Hour here on the Wendy Williams Experience. Um, I like to start off. Hold on, don't press it because I I can't find my medical minutes. Hold on. I like to start off Advice Hour, the medical minute, and I had it already. Dog going it. Dog going it. Yeah, well, <laughs> it is what it is. Oh gosh, I had it here on my, on my. I swear to you, I was prepared. Wow. Wowie, wowie, wowie. In the meantime, um. Oh, here it is. Now. We know that we really don't want to be cranky and unhealthy. So here's how you can avoid being cranky and unhealthy. Get your sleep. Yeah. Now, according to the people at For Me magazine, they say, test yourself. Write down how you feel on a piece of paper. Then try to get your eight hours of sleep per night for two straight weeks and write down your feelings again. Chances are you'll feel better. In my opinion, that's too much writing. It's too much work. Just go to sleep. (laughs) But I'm taking the suggestion of For Me Magazine, the medical experts there. They also say maintain a regular sleep schedule even on the weekends. Use the 11 p.m. news as your indicator that you're ready for bed. For me, I use the 10 p.m. news that I'm ready for bed. They also say, establish a relaxing bedtime routine, such as taking a hot bath or reading. Okay. Also, they say, log off. It's easy to lose track of time when you're online. So, log off. They also say, take your snoring partner to the doctor. If your snoring partner is in the way of your sleep, their blood pressure is waking you up every night. Excuse me, your blood pressure, they say, goes up every night by them snoring. Plus, it's bad for his or her health. They also suggest that you sleep in a cool, comfortable setting, 60 to 65 degrees. Quite frankly, I like 77 degrees. That's it. 77 degrees. I like to be able to kick off the comforter. And if I do, I'm still not going to freeze. They also suggest choosing a comfortable mattress and pillow. Well, we all know by now, right? The key to a good night's sleep is the mattress that you sleep so that you sleep on. They say don't eat at least two or three hours before your regular bedtime, because uh, you you know you anyway. They also say use your bedroom only for sleep and sex. Think of it as your sanctuary. Me personally, I like to use it as an everything room. You know, but, um, you know, you do what's best for you. They suggest use your bathroom only, excuse me, avoid um, caffeine at night. Of course, obviously, it keeps you awake. Exercise regularly, but don't do it right before bedtime because your body is all revved up and you won't be able to go to sleep properly. They say turn the lights out. Before the invention of the the light bulb, people slept an average of 10 hours a night. Wow. Just FYI. Wow. Wow. The last wow. suggestion is consult your doctor if none of these things work and your sleep order continues. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Wendy's makeshift medical minute. Thank you. Thank God I had a plethora of stuff in front of me because that wasn't my, my original medical minute. It's still lost somewhere <laughs> under my crap. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> But nevertheless, advice, advice hour must go on, and uh, the curtain is open. Let's go to line number three. Kay is a lesbian female who needs to know where to meet Actually, others. Actually, a new caller. Kay is gone. Oh, Kay is gone? Yeah. Well, I hope that, num- that the new caller is calling about advice. Hello? you got five and six. You're- five and six? Yeah. Neither one of them are registering correctly here. All right, so let's go to three. All right. Hello? Hello? Oh, boy. Um, hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, uh, yes. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, thank you. It's advice hour. Okay, yes. I'm calling because yeah, I... Your name, is Sasha, your name is Sasha? 
Yes. Okay, got the right person. Okay. Tell me about your 50 pounds. Uh, okay, well, I had a baby. I gained about 50 pounds. I lost them all. Mm-hmm. Good for you. And um, I want to get a really good dermatologist. I have certain dark spots on my joints. And I know I always hear you talking about, I think, Miss Janine Downey or something yeah, like that. Dr. Janine Downey. Okay, yeah, and I wanted to get her phone number. I'll, I'll go online, I go to the yellow pages, and I don't seem to find it. Well, and I just wanted... her practice is called Image Dermatology. Image Dermatology. Yeah, okay. and she's, she's located on Park Street in Montclair, New Jersey. And, oh, okay. And, and she's my dermatologist. Uh-huh, yeah, I was here talking about her. And um, so, and I don't have her telephone number in front of me, but she's okay. in directory assistance. Okay, no problem. Image, imaging. Image Dermatology. Image Dermatology. Thank you so much, Wendy. Yes, Dr. Janine Downey. Got it. Okay. Line number six is Susie. She's 28. Um, uh, what is this? Something about something uh, stolen? Uh, Susie, what are we dealing with? Hello? Hello, Wendy. Hi, Susie. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Oh, my goodness. I have to call you. I kept calling over and over until I could get through. Okay. I was at work today, and um, we got paid and everything, and I went to get my check, and I asked my boss, where's my check? And she said that she left it on my desk. So I went to my desk. I found the check and everything. I put it in my purse, went to the bathroom, came back out, left with another staff to go get um, to go to the bank to go cash the check. Mm-hmm. When I get to the bank, the check is gone. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> okay, so I get back to the job. I don't say anything. I just play it off, you know, because um, this is a person that's very grimy, you know, white, of course. Who, but, you ta- who are you talking about? Your boss who distributes yes. the ch- Okay. Yeah, she's grimy. I'm sorry okay. I'm talking so fast. I'm just trying to hurry up. Okay. So, um, so then I got back to the job, and I didn't say anything. So I said, um, is there any possible way that you saw my check? And she was like, no, I didn't see it. I was like, okay, fine. So I kept looking for it, kept looking for it. Never found it, okay? So I called the office, asked them to reprint it for me, and they told me that it was going to be $32 to reprint it. Fine. Mm-hmm. I paid $32. Then I'm looking on the printer in the office, mm-hmm. and I found the check inside the printer. Wow. And there was wow. only three of us wow. there. I don't the think, I, I wouldn't think that it was your boss. I would think, you know, pardon me for thinking this way. This is another coworker who wants to see how much money you were making. So they, the, they, they were forced to have to steal your check in order to open it. I don't believe, because, I don't believe it was your boss. No, we, we leave the checks out in the open. Nobody hides what they get, anything like that. You see what I mean? And the other staff was in the kitchen when I went to the bathroom and my purse was in the office. But when I went back, really, it was it wasn't there. So okay, can I ask you? Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, this is a small office, right? Mm-hmm. And and everybody knows what everybody makes. Yes, we we, we don't really care. It's like that. Okay. Like when we- <laughs> so, so what's your final question to me? Because I'm My thinking to myself, is, just get the tr- check reprinted. And from now on, when you get it, put it in your bra like everybody else does. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because Susie, well, it's... My, my answer is I'm never going to bring my purse inside the job again. Okay, well, that's, that's another thing, thing, yes. And then I wanted to know how can I get back without letting her know that I know. Because, like... You don't know that she stole your check. Okay, this morning, she never asked me anything about it. This is a person that's very inquisitive that will ask 20 million questions. But at the end of the day, Susie, this is a person that's your boss. And there's no getting... You want to know how you get back at your boss? And this goes for everybody. The the way you get back at your boss is to leave their place of business, go someplace else, and blow the hell up. That's That's how you get back, Susie. Otherwise, you're not getting back at your boss. She will have the last word, or he will have the last... Uh, word and the last yes. laugh all the time. All the best the way time. to the best way to get back at grimy bosses is to quit the job. Quit. Don't even wait to be fired. Quit. Okay. Go someplace else. Blow the up, and make sure that they find out about your blow up. Okay. Well, I love you anyway. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. She said anyway, like she's not going to use that advice like that. Just, you know, all right, Wendy, that's not what I wanted to hear. But listen, take it from a person who has been through it. The best revenge on grimy bosses is to go someplace else and blow up. And then have them come back to you and say, you know, it was never personal. It was always just business. I love that. Helena is on line number one. 
and she and her husband are not relating. She wants to know what to do. Helena? Helena? Check, check, check one, two. Helena? Hmm. Okay, she's not there. Well, I've got, I've got a couple of letters here. From the fax machine, which 866 Wendy Fax. Leave the Y off for yay, 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 yay. <laughs> Dear Wendy, I've been married for 21 years. I have given him every chance for the past 10 years to get it together. We have, in other words, the, the past 11 years. I don't know what she's been doing, but um, okay. I, for the past 10 years. No, no, she's right. The past 10 years. Uh, we have four children, three girls and one boy. The girls are beautiful young adults, graduated, going to college, supervisors, not a damn problem. When the girls' dates come to pick them up, I start cleaning my weapons and say, what time will you have my daughter home? Since my husband stays so damn drunk to scare anyone, I have to be both the man and the woman in this marriage. My son... God, he's handsome, Wendy, and he looks and acts so much older than he is. He lied about his age and got a job bartending because his father has stopped being productive. He's also in college. I'm having him terminated from his job because it can be detrimental to the establishment that he works for. He's not of age. I will do it tactfully since he hasn't worked there long. But God, he's his pay is good, Wendy. $750 a week with tips. My question to you, is there anyone out there listening to your show at the Veterans Administration that makes home visits or can they contact me so that I can be informed? If I can put in an application to get money as his guardian to help with our finances since he refuses to do so. He was in the Army for seven years, I guess she's talking about his her husband mm -hmm. in the army for seven years. I'm getting the runaround. I'm ready to move on before my face and body start to crack and fall. I'm very fortunate. I did not let my husband's condition, if you want to call it that, hold me back. Hmm. And then it's signed with an email address. So the question is about the Veterans Administration and can she file the proper paperwork to be getting his money since he's too drunk to pay attention to anything. Um, I will wait for somebody from the Vet Administration to get, get in contact with the show at 866-GET-WENDY. That's the phone number. Or you can always fax at 866-WENDY-FAX. Woman. I hope that you're still listening because I will um, try to get to you with an answer as soon as I get an answer for you. My question to you is after you start getting his money, what does that mean to you? You've been in a screwed up marriage for the past 10 of the 21 years. Why don't you just divorce this deadbeat? I mean, why don't you just leave him and his bottle of brown juice right there on the couch? Um, but I'll get back to you uh, if I get the information. Thanks. Wendy, man. Presently, my um, husband just got discharged from the military. But now he's home, and I just want to tell him to get the f*** out. The Wendy Williams Experience. New York's ultimate Christmas party is the WBLS Party with a Purpose. December 17th at the Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquis, 45th Street and Broadway. With a cocktail reception sponsored by the Merchants of Jamaica Avenue, Shop Jamaica Center. Plus a full holiday buffet and live entertainment from Jaheen, Vivian Green, Sharissa, Donnell Jones, and Cameo. Don't miss out. VIP tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster, 212-307-7171. It's a party with a purpose. From 107.5 WBLS. BLS, today's R&B, and classic soul. And the Wendy Williams experience. Yeah. Party with a Purpose is heating up, boy. Tickets are in limited supply right now. The joint is virtually sold out. Full holiday buffet, live entertainment featuring Cameo and Sharissa, Jaheem, and Donnell Jones. December 17th, that's next Saturday. Next Saturday. 
at the Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquis, 45th Street and Broadway, in Times Square, New York City, USA. Um, the sponsors of this year's Party with a Purpose are New York City Department of Health. Thank you so much. Also, thank you to Preferred Equity Solution. And, of course, our friends at Razak Hair Products. We love Razak! The proceeds of, the, of our Party with a Purpose benefit the Anti-Domestic Violence Program day one. You might have known it in the past as Break the Cycle. Okay, so get your tickets now. Call Ticketmaster, 212-307-7171. We'll all be there from Hal Jackson to Steve Harvey. I'll be there, too. And um, so we'll see you at the WBLS Christmas Party with a Purpose. They got it going on. Shadow Nightclub is heating up for the holidays. What? You haven't heard? <laughs> First of all... The shadow was free last night, which is Thursday night. Tonight, it's Mr. Magic, and it's free again. I don't know how the shadow pays their bills. <laughs> Everything is free all the time. All right, so Mr. Magic is there tonight. The shadow is free tomorrow night. It's Chuck Chill out in the mix on Saturday night. And, of course, when we move along to Christmas, Christmas is on a Sunday. But on Saturday, Christmas Eve, the Shadow Night Club is having their singles-only affair, which means remove your wedding ring and go in there and get what you can. Hey! Ladies, when you go to the Shadow, you've got to be very aware of the married men, okay? <laughs> mm hmm Anyway, and then on uh, New, New Year's Eve, it happens to be a Saturday, too. They're having a big party. And uh, so it's all about the Shadow. It's all about the shadow, baby. You deserve the best. That is Manhattan's best, most consistent, long-running nightclub. So um, I would like to go to the phone to take some advice. Now, Sylvia is on line number two. Sylvia is 50 years old. The computer says, Sylvia, turn your radio down. Uh, Sylvia? Sylvia? Hello? Yeah, the computer says that you're stuck in the 70s and you want to make over. You want to know what to do. I want to know what to do. I'm fabulous, just like Wendy. Well, no, this is Wendy, Sylvia. Hi. Hi, Wendy. All right, so you're 50 years old, and you want to know what to do. I want to know what to do. I want to well, make over. Well, I would say the first place to start is your hair and your makeup. Do you wear yeah, makeup? No. Well, you I know. I know I have to start with my hair. I want to know where to go. Well, do you live in New York City? I live on Long Island. Long Island. Well, let me see, uh, Long Island. What part of Long Island? I live in Suffolk, but I go to the city. Well, then come to my salon, Salon Santa Cruz on Madison Avenue. On Madison Avenue? Yes, yeah, Santa owns it. She actually does hair there, but also my hairstylist and makeup artist Steve Lindsay is there. Okay, oh. will they do a complete makeover from head to toe? Well, no, 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 no. They, the, well, Steve does makeup and Steve does hair. Okay. Now, as far as your head-to-toe makeover, do you have children, Sylvia? Oh, my kids are grown. They're in college. One is on her master's. I just want to look beautiful you, again. You said her. You grab your daughter by the arm and you tell her what you want. Your, your daughter should be able to help you, and it'll be a great bonding time for you and she. Really? And That's she, what you suggest? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, please. I want to make over like the big do on the Oprah show and the Tyra Banks show. And I want a new outfit. I want to know what to do with me. I would like an image consultant or a stylist. Okay. And I don't know where they go. Mm. But I'll check it out with my daughters if that's your advice. Yeah. You know, I would say hair and makeup go to Steve Lindsay. He's a real visionary when it comes to hair and makeup. Ew. Steve Lindsay? Steve Lindsay. He's at Salon Santa Cruz on Madison Avenue. I heard you talk about her before. I, Him. I'm one, of, I'm one of your more faithful listeners. Thank, I love you, Wendy. Thank you, Sylvia. And and listen, you grab your daughter and start reading good magazines for for um, for fashion. You know what I mean? Doesn't I mean will. that you have to get a $2,500 skirt from Vogue magazine, but you can get the look for less over at, 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 any, at any place. You know, go, right. go for the look for less. In case you don't like the look, you won't feel so bad about what you've spent on it. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, I'll do that. All right, Sylvia. I'll do check out the salon. Thank you so much. And I wish you well. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye. Also, one thing is, is that I forgot to ask her, does she wear prescription glasses? Because she could start with going to her eye doctor with her daughter and getting something really modern as far as a new frame and stuff. Yeah, do the look for less. I got on some Costco leggings. Oh, no, excuse me, a Costco sweater and Kohl's leggings today. What? 
My my whole outfit. All right, not including my boots because my boots are from um, a, a ski shop um, in Vail. They they were a little pricey, and my my white mink. That's Demetrio. You know, and my and my Gucci bag. But my torso is swathed in about ten dollars. Wow. <laughs> about ten dollars. Wow. Costco sweater, Kohl's leggings. <laughs> Give me a break. You know, do the look for less and don't be ashamed. Every you know, you can't trick up all your money at Gucci or you'll be broke. Right. And who are you keeping up with? Your broke friends fronting? <laughs> they don't have you know, they might not have it like that either. Who are you keeping up with? Kamora Simmons? Hello, Kamora can do that. She has it like that. You're not Kamora. Let's face it. Better get up in Costco and grab that the sweaters from that bin. <laughs> Line number three. No. She, okay, she's dropped. Oh, gosh, because line number three was so important. She's 23 years old, 26. And she and her friend went to get an AIDS test, and her friend tested positive. And they want to know from me what she should do. Oh, yeah, pray. And, and, and continue to see the doctor. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I know your phone call got dropped, but... This is over my head. Go see the doctor. You know, and, and what you can do is her, her friend is be supportive. Oh, she's still on? Goose, line number three. Okay, let's see. Hello? Hello? Is this you? Yeah. Oh. I'm listen, so- listen, Wendy. Okay. Don't feel sad for me. I was negative. Okay. But don't get it twisted. This is my best friend and we run together. We do the same things together. Right. But she's not trying to calm down, Wendy. If she's telling me she's not going to, she's not telling nobody about it. She don't want me to tell nobody about it. She used to mess with my brother. I have to tell my brother. Crap. Of course she did. What? Excuse me. Let's, let's not get it twisted, okay? Your best friend can put her crap where? Right over there. Your brother is your family. But, you but Wendy, be- mm. Wendy, all right. I don't want to put my name out there because we basically, they call us video hosts. You know what I'm saying? We, we go out. Oh. They, we, we mess with rappers. Oh. Especially a famous rapper from Queens. You know? Um, I need more information. I, I feel sorry for her, but I don't know what to do. Is he light skin with plastic surgery, or is he brown skin with a steroid body? <laughs> he's, if I, all right, he's, let me see. He, he ain't nobody, though. I mean. Oh, okay, then never mind, never mind, I never mean, mind. All right, he's nobody to us because we know who he is and everything. Right. But he is probably somebody, he's short, married, kid. Mm. Um. What are you all doing? Village. What are you all doing? Are you all having unprotected sex? Sometimes we do because sometimes we do. We will be taking the X and all of that, and we don't know what we're doing until we wake up in the morning. But I don't know. I don't know. Are you going to continue your behavior? No, hell no. This has been your wake up call, right? Yes, it is. But she don't want to stop. We have we go we have plans to go out tonight, and she's going out. She'd be at your dance and be with party too, Wendy. Oh, crap. All right. Well, it'll be somebody with AIDS in the building. She, we already have our tickets. To, we be there. We already have our tickets and everything. And we coming with the, the so-called rapper, too. <laughs> Why? 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 <laughs> Why? I'm sorry, Wendy. We found out yesterday. Why? We went back for a result Why? yesterday, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Things are going so well. <laughs> Things are going so well. Exactly. Wow. Wow. I don't know, Wendy. <laughs> it's, it's funny because a whole lot of people have it, and I know that because you'd be surprised. I mean, we we look good, Wendy. We look good. I mean, wherever we go, we get what we want. We don't have to. Pay well, for when nothing. you walk in, when you walk in any place, from now on, you're gonna hear your theme song. <laughs> no, we don't look like we. We didn't even know we. Is just something? AIDS, AIDS, and HIV doesn't have a look. So we're all pretty much aware. Of, oh crap! But I'm but let's see. Sweating. Give me some damn brown juice. Let's see, Wendy. I don't know. I don't know what to do. What are you? I mean, you're you're negative, but you need to keep getting tested. I know, and, and you need to stop taking that damn X, okay? You need to. Are, are, do you think you're addicted? Be honest. Let's talk real. Are you addicted to X? Yes. All right. You need to get yourself some some help.
Are you ready to get help? Because yeah, I am ready to get help. Okay. Um, you can't worry about your friend. You're going to worry about you because you might test positive next time around. I know. I could have it right now. I don't even know I have it with me. That's, you could have passed it on to the rapper and his wife, and, and, and then she kisses the kids. I know. I, did, I never had sex with the rapper. She did. Well, you could have passed it on to anybody. You're, you're taking X. You're not having protected sex. And you're walking around. Uh, you know, you could test po You could have it right now, exactly, and then you'll test positive next time. Now, your friend needs to be stopped. Now, you can talk to her until you're blue in the face, but I got to tell you something right now. If you're planning on going out tonight and you called her with the, hey, girl, let's go out call, you're helping her. She can't go out and have fun until she comes to terms with being responsible. I'm not saying that her life is over, but I'm saying she needs to ingest what it is that she has. She needs to be in touch with the medical experts. She needs to start taking her meds, use a condom, informing people, fall off the X. She needs to do all of that stuff. You guys smoke weed. The tip of the blunt gets all wet. You're passing it to the next no, person. No, we don't do that. We don't have to do that. We don't have to pass. We always have our own. Good. But, Wendy, we're supposed to go down south. And... I mean... Why do they call you video hoes? What videos have you been in? A few. Tell them. Tell me. Tell us. <laughs> okay. I've been... All right. Have you seen the... Um, have you seen the... the if I tell you what video I'm in, y'all going to know what rap I'm talking about. Just tell the video. <laughs> You're not talking about a rapper. You don't have to say all that. Just tell us the video. I'm in a few. I'm in a few of um, Ja Rule videos. I'm in a few of um, Fat Joe videos. But Wendy... Is your friend in the videos, too? Yes, Wendy. You, but Wendy, we're not, I don't think we're the only one. In, of course you're not. Of course you're you not. You know, but Wendy, I am scared out of my head right now. When did you get your results? Yesterday, Wendy. Oh, God. You and your and friend. And the, the doctor told me that I have it, but I won't even know it till like six months down the line. It's just so scary. I don't know what to do. Do you have children? No. Do you, do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> no. You don't understand. It's like we're always around them. Like right now, I'm calling you from like one of their houses. She's in the next room sleeping. I don't know what to do. When they like a friend in my head, that's why I pick up the okay, phone. Okay, okay, this is what you do. This is what you do. This is this is what you do. Wake her up. It's time for you all to leave. Okay? It's time for you girls to stick together. Because she might be the only one diagnosed, but like you said, you might know that you're diagnosed positive in six months. You all need to stick together. Now, obviously, you don't work a regular job. And obviously, you don't have health insurance. No. You need to get in touch with community-based organizations that offer free medical help as well as psychological help. You guys need counseling, and you need to keep up with, your, with, with her positive diagnosis. And as for you, young lady, you and your friend need to stop doing drugs. Drugs weaken the immune system. So does alcohol. I'm sorry to say, the party life is not for you. You all need to sit out on the sidelines and get you all's lives together. What you need to be doing is finding a, new, uh, finding a job and stop living like a whore. Okay? Do you, you understand what I'm saying? I, I so understand what you're saying, Wendy. You're 26 years old. It's time. Stop living like a whore. And stop living off the backs of other men, of, of other women's husbands. We didn't find them, Wendy. They found us. Yeah, but you know what? It takes two to tango. You know how many men I could have slept around with if I just leapt? You know how many times I could have been unfaithful to my husband if I just left? Men find us all the time. We're women. And if you look halfway decent, then your chance of getting sex from men, married or single, is at least 20 times a day. The weak women leap. The strong ones stick to their conviction. You're weak. 
and now your friend is physically weak and will become more weak. And, and that's what, and, and drugs will speed that along. And this nightlife and these crazy hours will speed that along. You all need to stop it now. Put the brakes on this life you've been leading and turn your lives around. And as far as the HIV diagnosis, she needs she needs a doctor. She needs to find a job with some benefits. <clears throat> In the meantime, you all need to find the, the closest free local clinic and get yourself some physical help as well as psychological help. You need to put this life behind you. That, that diagnosis yesterday needs to be the first day of your new life. You understand, sweetheart? Thanks, Wendy. Uh, sweetheart, how old is your friend? She's their age. 26 also. Are you in the rapper's house now? Or one of the, ha like, whose house are you in now? Yeah, we are in the rapper's house right now. Is this a rapper? One of his, one of his house. Is this a rapper that if you said his name, we would all know who it is? Yes. And you all have had unprotected sex with him? I, n I never had sex with him. I had sex with his um, friends, but not with him. Okay. Unprotected sex with his friends? No. Has your girl had unprotected sex with I him? I don't know. So we be out of our minds sometimes. We don't know what we be doing. Okay. So, Darn. so you know, um, well, you're going to have to live with this one but um, or die with it. Are you ready to start a new life? I am so ready, Wendy. Are you going out tonight? Hell's no, Wendy. Will you be at my Dons and Divas? Yes, sir. No, 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 no. We don't want you there. I'm sorry. We don't want you there. I'll, 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 okay. invited. We don't want you there. <laughs> I don't want you there. I, I sent your hooker ass home, okay? I don't want you at my damn party. Uh, I'm looking forward to your party, Wendy. Mm -mm, I'm sorry. Mm -mm. I'm not coming there to sleep with nobody, Wendy. I'm coming there to have a nice Now, yes, you are, because that's all you know. <laughs> that's how you survive, hooker. <laughs> Will you please be there with a whole new attitude? Would you please conduct yourself like a respectable woman and be, be, uh, be, damn you. Damn Wendy, you. I already got my dress. I don't care. Return that dress and get a vaccination. Yo, what's up? This is Anthony Hamilton. What's up, yo? This is Angie Stone. And we're the boys to men. You're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> damn. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. What the yeah. hell? That's crazy. But you know what? That's reality. And it, 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 she's not going to be the only one up in there uh, with it. And, and stop mm -hmm. scrooching up your faces, you all. Mm -hmm. You know it. One out of ten people up in that piece will be... Mm. And one out of four will have herpes. So what I suggest... Wake up. Is that everybody wake up. We are upon a new year. And it's time you all start wearing condoms and leave the drugs alone. I've never known anybody, by the way, out of their mind on the chief. So, so, so everybody calm down. Everybody calm down. Is that medica self medication? Like KRS One says, you know, nothing wrong with a little self medication. However, you know, you all pill poppers, coke sniffers, needle doers, you can put that where way back there. Put that where back there. The national family might need an explanation. Yes. They might be wondering what, what, what's, what's on. Oh, gosh. All right, you all. Um, I was just talking with a young lady on the phone. She's 26 years old. And she and her girlfriend just got the results back from their HIV test yesterday. Her friend tested positive. They are video hoes. I mean, they literally, they don't have jobs. What they do is they sleep with rappers. And they get money that way. The girl was calling from one of the homes of a rapper. She didn't say which rapper. It almost doesn't even matter to me. Because whenever I look at a lot of performers, I just look at them with the, you know, like something stinks. You know how you squish up your face? Shakira, you were doing it. Like, ew. Dirty Richard. You know, like, like something's up. You know what I mean? But, um... Here's Tana. Tana says, Wendy, you should have asked the video ho. Is there a website so that these guys out there know who the girls are? I don't feel an ounce of sorrow for the girls. They need to be exposed. These girls have made it hard for women like me to find men without disease. Mm. You know what? Mm. 
and the unfortunate part about being on the radio as honest as I, as I as I try to be with you guys and as real as I try to be with my emotion, I always hold back. And I always hold back until the microphone closes. Then I go buck wild in this studio. Um, thank you, Tana, from Long Island. I just have to stick to my script as, as um, the, the gracious host and say, girls, just get your lives together. I'm not going to tell you it'll be okay. But I'm going to tell you, for you who's negative, it's not too late. For your friend, people are living with HIV every day. You all need to stop doing the ecstasy and getting out of your mind on drugs. You need to stop messing around with other men's, other women's men. You need to stop messing around, period. Hey, Goose, I'll save my real conversation for when the mic closes, okay? <laughs> yes, you know how I am. <laughs> yeah. Mm. FCC. Not FCC listeners <laughs> who might not understand how real and raw, yes. you know, the when will gets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fabiola Carrington has a whole nother side, honey. <laughs> oh, the people poll question from yesterday. This is for people, okay, who have children five years of age or younger. Or even if your kids are 15, when they were five years of age or younger. The question is, were or are your five-year-olds and youngers ears pierced? Yes or no? I'm surprised by the answer. 76% of you all said yes. <laughs> you have had the ears pierced of your zero years old, year old, your one year old, your two year old, your three year old, your four year old, your five year old. 76% of you all said yes. 24% of you all said no. Interesting. I just like to know more about you all. I have uh, no comment on that. Um, that I wish to share with the mics open. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, However, you all can feel free to comment on, you know, why it is that you did this, how the kids are doing. And, and for those 24% of you all that didn't do it, why it is that you didn't elect to have your, 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 your baby's ears pierced. Um, today's people poll question is, are you a procrastinator? Are you a procrastinator? <clears throat> yes or no? <clears throat> and you can go to my website, <clears throat> thewendywilliamsexperience.com. I would love to be able to go to the phone. Is line number five blinking? Yes. That's Monique. Monique has a male friend who stopped calling for no reason. She wants to know whether she should find out. Mm -hmm. Monique? Yes. When you say male friend, this is somebody that you were romantically involved with? Um, yes. For how long? Um, I've been dealing with him for about like seven months. Mm hmm And you guys were uh, having a sexual relationship? Yes. We was, he was my boyfriend. You, he actually said those words? Yes. And then all of a sudden he stopped calling? Um, yeah, he just, you know, like I was calling him and he was never answering the phone or his mom would say he was never there. And then, you know, I told him it gets a little annoying that when I call, he's never there. So I said, well, listen. You when's, have my when's the last time you saw him? Uh, the last time I seen him was maybe about three weeks ago. This is her boyfriend. She's asking me what to do. <laughs> Monique, this yes. relationship is over. Okay. And don't call him to find out why. Don't sweat him. Okay. And if he calls you, use your caller ID. Don't accept the calls. This relationship and all communication is over. Cut. Don't play yourself. You're 26 years old. You don't want to know a reason. This relationship is over. Right. Over. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Wendy. Let's go to line number six real quick. Diane is there, and she <laughs> um, wants to know if she should over. wait four Diane. years over. for her boyfriend to get out of jail. Okay. Diane, please turn the radio down. Diane! Hang up, hang up, hang up, hang up on Diane. Diane, you know what? Wait four years for your boyfriend to get out of jail. You all are meant for each other. <laughs> wait. You, you wait that time, girl. You wait it out like a good girl do. Damn. All right, you all. Keep it here. Iman is coming up next hour. It's windy, man. Me and my wife have been married for 15 years. They threatened to leave. What did you do? I had a problem with drugs. You got the drug voice. Yeah. Hey, man. Uh -huh.
just asking, what's your drug of choice? Name Coke? Uh, yeah. Weed? Yeah. Crack? Yeah. Heroin? Yeah. E-pills? Yeah. Whippets? Alcohol. Gorilla? Yeah. PCP? Yeah. The Windy. When I could open up a nationally publicated mag uh, published magazine and see somebody from my squad being highlighted, congratulations to my celebrity talent booker, Elisa Payne. And I just got word that the new vibe is on newsstands. Um, that word came from Michelle Fields Rice. And here's Elisa's story. Wow. Let me just see the hardest part of my job. Hmm. Let me see what she says. Losing guests is tough. Like when guests cancel at the last minute and convincing people to see the value in our particular show so they'll appear on it. Mm. Wait, I'll save this for my at-home reading. Look at Elisa up in the um, up in the Vibe magazine. This is a good look. Congratulations, Elisa. And now she's doing her job and bringing in our guest, Iman. Hello. Hi. Ooh. Mom, it's I'm very a, nice to I'm meet an you. African bearing gifts. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, an African bearing gifts. So funny. How so beautiful. You? So petite. What do you think? Well, you 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 have survived quite a, a career. You're still modeling. I can't even call you a former supermodel. You're a supermodel still. Uh, yeah, but I am like uh, I'm no spring chicken. I'm 50 years old. If that's 50, I'm not scared. No, you shouldn't. Look you look good too, darling. Thank, thank you. And look at your teeth. Those are your natural teeth. I'm, Absolutely. I'm good at spotting caps. Yeah, no, natural. Wow. Yeah. Africans and without a cavity. Because, <laughs> you know, in, in Africa, they don't give us sweets. Yes. So, yeah, no cavities. When did you actually come to America? In 1975. How old were you at that time? Uh, do the math. I don't know. 18, 19? I don't know. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. And your parents, you left behind your family? Yes. My father was a diplomat, uh, an ambassador. My mother was a doctor. And uh, in 1970, there was a, a, a civil war in Somalia. Mm -hmm. And we left the country, went to politi on political exile. Your whole family? The whole family. And literally crossed the border by foot. Oh, excuse me. And so every, what size shoe do you wear? Our feet are bumping each other. <laughs> Nine. I wear a size 11. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah, well, you know. Um, so you grew up in, um, in... In Somalia, but went also to Nairobi University in Kenya. I was majoring in political science. Financial privilege. Right, financial privilege, yes. Yeah. Did you have service? Servants at your house? Yes, we did have servants in my house when I was an ambassador's daughter. Mm -hmm. But once from 1970, we were actually refugees. So your father wasn't able to practice or, or work? Your mother wasn't able to practice? Nothing. We didn't, couldn't even take the money out of the country. We left literally without the clothes on our back and crossed the border from Somalia to Kenya by foot. How did you live once you got to Kenya? Uh, this, um, um, uh, the Kenyan government gave us asylum and uh, gave me a scholarship to go to school for one year. Mm -hmm. And I was working. Uh, yeah. uh, I speak five languages, so I was doing translations yeah. from the Ministry of Tourism. Are you an only child? No, five. Two boys and two girls. I'm the fifth. You're the fifth one. Yeah. So you're the youngest. No, no, actually, no. I'm the second. The second. I'm the second, second five of us, yeah. So how did you meet your husband, David Bowie? We were actually uh, set up, blind date, uh -huh. by a hairdresser above all people. Yes. Yeah, hairdressers are good at things yes. like this. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and he said to me, he'd like me to, to invite me to his... Uh, birthday party uh -huh. and I got there and uh, it was only four people <laughs> <laughs> it was him and his boyfriend and David and I so he introduced us and the rest is history and we've been together for 13 years wow yes. at what a five year old daughter at what point in the 13 years did you get married the second year how was pregnancy at 45 uh, hard. I mean, I have to say it's miraculous because I have a 26-year-old daughter. Yes. So I thought, you know, this is easy. I could do it with my clothes, my eyes. Yes, clothes, yes, kind of yes. And I couldn't get pregnant. Uh, I had a very hard time getting pregnant. I tried in vitro twice. Lost. And um, and the doctor said, I think uh, it's over for you because, yeah. you know, for the age. Mm -hmm. And uh, lo and behold, I got pregnant just like that. Yeah. And uh, it was really, tr truly a miracle. And after that, of course, uh, the doctor, when I said, can I try it again? He said, no, don't push it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it. Would yeah. you like to have more children? I would love to, but, you know, I think my time has it's passed. Done. Yeah. Would you consider adopting? I was actually considering adopting if I wasn't going to get pregnant. Yeah. They would ha if it didn't happen, I yeah. was thinking about adopting. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is your 26-year-old, you said? 26-year-old. What does she do? She works in my company. 
Nice. Yes. Good. This is a girl who was led to the water and she drank it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And she's going to inherit the company, so she might as well. Wonderful. And she yeah. learned all about it. And she, she's not just there as mommy's daughter. She's probably a smart cookie. Absolutely. She and do. she doesn't work for me. She works for the manager of the company. Very nice. So, yeah, she's not mommy's daughter. So, now, let's talk about your new book. Yes. Iman, um, everybody, has a new book in stores. It's called The Beauty, Co the Beauty of Color. The Beauty of Color. Yes. Where's and my copy? Oh, here it's it is. right here. And it is the ultimate beauty guide for skin of color. Yes. It's actually, I consider it as a, as a beauty tool or a beauty product. Yes. Because it's really uh, every, uh, you know, technique and information you need for women with skin of color, regardless whether you're African-American, African descent, Caribbean, Latina, Asian, and multi-ethnic women. N it's really an extension of the Imam Cosmetics brand. Your skin is gorgeous and it's even. And I just got a telephone call last hour from a woman who wanted to go to a dermatologist pertaining yeah. to darkened joints. Yes. And then a listener wrote in and said, here it is right here. Yes. Black Opal yeah. has um, a, a skin bleach yeah. that works well for women of color, the elbows and knees and Yes. Have you ever heard of Black Opal? Yes, a Black Opal, yeah. It's a cosmetics line exclusively for African-American women. Yes, and yes. they have a, a bleach cream. Yeah. Let, let's just start with that. Do you know of any good, reliable fade creams? Uh, we have one, and then it's free of what's called hydroquinine. Hydroquinine is a bleach. Oh. Yeah, so it's free of that. Because mm. the new products now that are available do not have bleach creams. Mm -hmm. They do the, the, the intention, which is lightening. Mm -hmm. But what they do is that they will have an SPF, so the sun does not make it darker, the spot that you want to make it lighter. Gotcha. Yeah, so, so there are a couple of uh, companies, including mine, who does products like that. But I, ours does not have bleach in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I buy products from your line at Henry Bendel. Yes. I, I'm a, a, I love that store. Yeah. Um, how difficult was it, Iman, to, to get your, your line started and out there in the, to the masses? In ten years ago, when I started Iman Cosmetics, uh, I wanted to create a company that was really for the new frontier, where, what's called women with skin of color, mm. um, because I wanted more than just African Americans. Because when you look at Latinas, there are girls who are as dark as I am, right. and there are blonde, blue eyes. Right. And the same thing applies to Asians, Filipinos, and Thailand mm -hmm. are as dark as I am. So I really wanted the celebration of all those ethnicities. Yes. So when I created the there was everybody was saying well why do black women or why do ethnic women need another line right and, and i was like well it's called options you right know? caucasians have 10 lines why couldn't we have 10. now prior to your um creating your own line which yes. at this point i'm sure you only use your own makeup yes what would you use flory roberts i uh, yeah, they basically flory roberts uh, uh fashion fair a bit of yves saint laurent uh -huh. it was a mix and match and trial by error and you know playing a chemist yeah for uh, 16 years as a model in the early years of modeling and when the makeup artist would make up your face would you often secretly be disappointed in the palette yeah. but worse the first question that when I arrived in America mm -hmm. on my third day in New York working for American Vogue was a uh, makeup artist asked me did you bring your own foundation oh my gosh I know. wow I know. And I was very perplexing question to me because there was the Caucasian model and nobody asked that. that right, yeah. right. So still, I mean, when I talked to Tyra Banks or Naomi Campbell, who are actually in the book, uh -huh. and I asked them, do you still carry your own foundations in your back when you go to a yes. shoot? And they say they no self-respecting black model would go to a shoot without her own foundation in her back because they might not have it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now you are like you and um, Beverly Johnson. Yes are like i consider you all the godmothers of african-american models yes uh when these young girls get out of line when they <laughs> when they bicker with each other and so on and so forth for some reason i see you all like swooping down on the situation and saying look yeah there's money and fame for all of us absolutely absolutely because when i came to america uh, uh, beverly johnson was the top black model mm -hmm. and obviously the minute i arrived here Thank God I was ignorant of the industry because I've never seen a fashion magazine in my life. Oh. Immediately, they started pitching one against each other. Yes. Because it was like they were, they were only going to use one black model at a time. Yeah. So you have to dethrone somebody. Right. To take your place. Right. And so, uh, I mean, I'm not... I didn't come from that kind of a mentality. Right. So um, I started working and she was put in so much pressure. And we were in Italy, I remember years ago in 1976, when a job that I couldn't do was offered to me, and mm -hmm. I said, why don't you give it to Beverly Johnson? Uh -huh. Needless to say, they offered her the job, she did it, but she found out that I'm the one who 
she told them to use her. When she came back to New York, she called me and we had lunch together and we've been friends since. Oh, Because what the, the thing is, there is nobody who's going to separate us but ourselves. Right. You know, if you don't play the game. Right. Th th as you said, there is enough room and enough money and enough jobs for all of for us. For all of you us. You know what I mean? So you were instrumental, yes or no, in, in Naomi and Tyra kind of coming together a bit, or you had nothing no, to do with it? No, that. I had nothing to do with it. They called me, uh -huh. and they told me that they were going to... I was very proud of them, because when I went on Tyra's show, she told me that they've taped the taping of that. And, uh -huh. and uh, Tyra said to me that whenever... Uh, she would wa Naomi would walk into the room. Uh, she felt very uncomfortable, yeah. and you know, and, uh, which I was not aware of. Yes, it. but I was very proud of both of them and just getting it out of their system. This and because a lot of young models would follow that path, right? You know, of whatever you do, and if you and if you th if they think that that's how you got to where you are by backbiting by, by, by and stabbing, else, that's what they think is the norm. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Tyra and you yes. have really done, and Christy Brinkley, yes. and, um, you know, and Kathy Ireland, yes. you guys have gone on, you've, you've carved out a life beyond modeling, and I love that. And what I wanted to know from you is, um, have you talked to Naomi uh, a bit? And this is why I say this, because I feel like Naomi, <laughs> in her own little way, Iman... <laughs> is a mess <laughs> and it's not cute anymore iman it's not cute well i i i don't know what you're exactly talking about what oh, do you mean by iman. mess you know you're bad you're terrible and she's a mess she's throwing cell phones and she's arguing she's having fights with people she's behaving like a 25 year old when in fact you know she's much older than that she should be planning the rest of her life carving out she has a fantastic company by the way what it's is called, the company it's called nc connect and what do they do what do they do they're event planners Oh, planning another party where she can go and drink her drinks and throw another cell phone. Listen, how about that Kate Moss? Yeah, how, how about Kate? How prevalent were drugs when you were modeling? Oh, I mean, they're still prevalent. Are yes. you kidding? Yeah. I mean, but it's no different from any other of the other have, businesses. Have you ever been in rehab? No, I have never been in rehab. I've always known when to leave a party. Yes, <laughs> never yes. Stay too long. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've done the studio 54 days. I've done all of that. Yeah. There's nothing I haven't done that these girls have done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I've, I, I, and I, too, was young ones. <laughs> yes. And so you dabbled, but you knew when to leave the party. Yeah, yeah I didn't. And when yeah. to leave it alone. And you were focused exactly. on what you wanted for your life after modeling or yeah. you just happenstanced along into the no, cosmetic you know, industry? The thing, the thing is that you really have to know when uh, uh, you should pursue something else because you don't want things to, to, to just abruptly finish right. while you're not ready for your second act. For girls who uh, want to model now, uh, when is, is, is it time to wrap it up by and large, the average age of a model these days? Oh, well, it's not about age because sometimes people start at 15 and by 20 they could be over the hill. Okay. Or you could start at 20 and by 25 it's over but it, it really you you will know it because there is always a, a crop of fresh models who are right yeah. right there yeah it's time to go yes yes <laughs> yes yeah and it, now while of course you know you're the czar of your own cosmetic company so you've amassed millions and millions of dollars at the height of being Iman, were you... Wait, hold on, hold on. Just just affiliates, just give me another moment, and then we're going to have uh, Iman in for another break. But I just want to find out, financially yeah. speaking, yeah. Um, were you a multimillionaire at the height of your modeling? Yes. When I walked away from modeling, I was already, yes. Yeah, multi a multimillionaire. Yeah. And what types of things did you invest your money in? Uh, uh, you know, strip malls? Re real estate. Real estate, real estate. Uh, and, and, you know, franchises. Uh, what kind of franchises? From Starbucks. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I've always diversified. And I've always believed that the, my money should work for me while I sleep. That's right. <laughs> now, your mom and dad, are they still alive? Yep, both of them. Uh, are they working still? No, retired. No, you take care of them. I take care of Very them. Very well. Yep. And now, where do they live? They live in America. They live here in America. Yep. Isn't, that, isn't that lovely? Yeah. That's a wonderful thing. I could see your father, the diplomat, sitting back and writing books in his retirement yeah. time. <laughs> and uh, yes. and, and your, your siblings, what do they do? My siblings are varied. My youngest, the youngest of the family, she's going to NYU here. Um, the rest are married with children. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It took you a moment to get married, or were you married before? No, I, I was married single. before. I was married three times. Once in Africa when I was 18 for like 20 minutes. Wow. Uh, yes, my mother, my parents annulled it. Mm, and then, they annulled 
all did. <laughs> yes. Well, you fell in love with an older man? No, he wasn't even older. <laughs> they just thought, what are you doing? You're hold, already 18. <laughs> hold that thought. We're going to talk more with Iman uh, about, about her love life. She's going to be around the New York metro area signing copies of her book. Yes. And um, I've got the whole lineup in front of me. Yes. So more chat with supermodel Iman. Iman, what's your legal last name? Bowie? No. Abdul Majid. I never changed my family name. Iman Abdul Majid. There you Next. go. Keep it here. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Oh, my amazing. boyfriend and I have been dating for like about four months now, and first time we had sex, he could not get it off at all. Maybe it's drinking. Is he a drug user? Does he take any depressants or anything? No, nothing. Maybe it's for you to the Wendy Williams experience. <laughs> oh gosh, I was just agonizing behind the scenes with my squad. I'm like, you know, and you've heard me say this on the show before, everybody. Iman is like the original Star Jones. I mean, Al is like David Bowie. Ow. I mean, let let let's face it. And I just want to, you know, it, you know, let let's talk about it. I mean, you know, you get with somebody and they have their past, and we all know, you know, the stories and stuff. How, you How do you deal with that? How do you deal? <laughs> you know. And I suspect her answer will be, you know, well he's out of the performance like he's out of being part of today's music and and you know you calm down i don't know i, I want to find out what her answer is though goose we're going to elongate that last break with her just for a moment I, okay. I i feel like i have to ask her i just have to choose my words carefully she's in the other room right now by the way doing uh drops for the show taryn you gonna make sure she does how you doing? Yeah. Okay, good. Definitely. All right. Iman's got a new book out, uh, Tri-State, and I want to give you the information on where she's doing her book signing because once we get into this David Bowie thing, I don't know whether she's going to walk out or not. I certainly don't want her to. I'm going, watch how tasteful I'm going to be. I'm not, it's not going to be like toe talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get, I'm, I'm going to get very, uh, very stoic on her. I'm going to blink my eyes a lot and look up at the ceiling as if I'm searching for the right words from the G-O-D. And then I'm going to look down and I'm going to furl my eyebrows, except I got good Botox, so everything is frozen. But I'm going to furl my eyebrows and, and, and Taryn, I want no sound effects. Okay. Goose, I want no music behind. And I just want to, you know, go in. No, ah, nothing, nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get very, very, you know. Maybe, maybe I'll pull out my prescription glasses too. Iman has a prescription glasses on. Maybe I'll pull out my glasses too if I could find them. Uh, and and you know, talk to her. You know, woman to woman. Yes, let's talk woman to woman. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Iman's new book is in stores. It's called The Color of uh, The Beauty of Color. The Beauty of Color. It's Iman's ultimate beauty guide for skin of color. Uh, listen, this, uh, and we have to talk about her marriage to Spencer Haywood. That's where her daughter came from. Um, there are some legendary story stories none that i can judge up in my mind right now regarding their relationship but she's a really lovely woman damn you all for applying pressure i feel your pressure through the radio <laughs> damn you all mm. well she has an event at sam's club on 300 park place in secaucus this event is going to be Uh, what day of the week is this even? Uh-uh. Sam's Club? Yeah. Oh, that's tomorrow at noon. Oh, okay. <laughs> tomorrow at noon at Sam's Club in Secaucus, New Jersey, 300 Park Place. And while you're over there in Secaucus, New Jersey, getting an autographed copy of Iman, the beauty industry icon and businesswoman, legendary. Uh, you might want to also stop by Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. Uh, they're over there in Secaucus, too. I just have to throw that in because <clears throat> I'm so happy with the outcome of my office. And I love the way Steve Harvey's office looks. And we have a guest room at our house that Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. I got the furniture from there. And they're, you know, clients of the station. They're wonderful people. Hey, Stephanie Cohen. What's happening, Benny? <clears throat> 
And they're open on Saturdays, too. But um, Iman is going to be at Sam's Club once again, 3 300 Park Place in Secaucus, New Jersey, tomorrow at noon, signing copies of her new book. Mm hmm. It's nice talking with her. Hey, everybody. The ultimate Christmas party with a purpose is about to happen. It's the WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. Next Saturday, December 17th at the Marriott Marquis, the Broadway Ballroom, uh, 45th Street and Broadway. It's featuring a cocktail reception. It's brought to you by the Merchants of Jamaica Avenue. Shop Jamaica Center for the holiday season and beyond. And I will see you all at a Christmas party, the, our Christmas party with a purpose. Oh. Um, oh, I, you know what? I would love to be able to give away passes for the Dons and Divas extravaganza right now. And I forgot to give them away last hour. So I need uh, two pair of passes I'm giving away. I need I, two great people. Um, um, where's my Dons and Divas information? Our Don is giving us the hardest time about making this announcement. Yeah, he's giving us a really hard time. He doesn't want to make the announcement until he's able to call in and collaborate with the phone conversation. And... Oh, man, it's a whole thing. And I don't want to, you know, ruffle his feathers because if I ruffle his feathers, then he'll be, you know, pulling out of the event. And, you know, I think that this will be a great look for him. And this will be your first time partying with him. And um, and he loves to party. So I'm going to keep it um, under my hat until I can pull it out. But I want to shout out to the Dons and Divas sponsors, some of them, including <clears throat> Gilliard Clothing. Thank you so much, Gilliard Clothing. They're going to be tricking out the VIP. Shout out to George Vaselli um, Champagne. We'll be trying that at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. First champagne with a linen label. It is really fabulous. And my friends from the Champagne region of France are coming to Dons and Divas. They're bringing all the Champagne. Hours and hours of open bar. And I'm talking about top shelf stuff, not the kind of stuff that's going to make you throw up. Like when you go on a cruise or when you go to Hedonism in Jamaica and they give all, all that open bar with them packages and you spend more time vomiting. It's not because you drank too much. It's because that's that basement liquor. You know what I mean? That's the basement liquor. We're drinking Martel Cognac the night of uh, the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Special shout out to my friends at Seagram's. You know, get your ticket now. You can go online at the Wendy Williams Experience dot com um, and, and find out the locations. Ellen John's Barbershop, Philani Clothing, both in Queens. Hillside Auto Spa in Queens. What's up, Ron? 718-523-2309. In New Jersey, the Heat Clothing Store in Montclair. Also, if you know race and you know Qua, call them up and get your passes. If you know my main man, um, I was going to say Capone. Capone doesn't have passes, but he'll be there. Corleone over in Jersey City. He's got passes for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. And um, Demetrio Furs in Manhattan. Black Star Music. Shout out to Vibes Salon on North Franklin in Long Island. Um, I have a Long Island telephone number that's not Vibes, but it, it's a telephone number. A one, uh, 516-384-4140. If you see Jay Black... Hit him up for some tickets. He's got him over in Brooklyn. Let's go to the telephone and find out, um, you know, what all is going on. We need a winner. I need two winners, as a matter of fact. Um, the phone the phone lines are down. Oh, God, the phone lines are jammed sometimes. Sometimes they get jammed. All right, let, just hit, hit a line. Hello? Wendy. Hi. How are you? Good. Who's this? This is Monica. Hi, Monica. Where are you calling from? I am actually calling from New Jersey. Very nice to have you here, Monica. I listen to you every day, Wendy. I just want to say you are amazing. Thank you, Monica. Are you at work? Yes. Where do you work? I can't tell you. Okay. Well, what do you? What's your? What's your career? What do you do? I'm a legal assistant. A legal assistant. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. Do you work at Hunt Hamlin and Ridley in Newark? No. Oh. Because that's my law firm in Newark. Is it? And they, they'll all be at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza, too. As a matter of fact, their office Christmas party is the same night, December 22nd, but it's earlier in the evening. Oh, my goodness. And, like, by 10 o'clock, Ray is kicking everybody out, and then he and Zariah, his wife, are going home to change and, and join us at the Dons and Divas. So, Monica? Yeah? Are you a single lady? Yes, I am. Recently divorced. Oh, oh girl. Mm, mm, horrible. Don't even want to go there. I know. Just please tell me that I can go to the Dons and Divas. Please tell you, me I can go. Because my birthday is Saturday, and I would like 
make my day. You can, you can go, Monica. Oh, my God. Monica, how long were you married to that rat? Nine years. Oh, my gosh. But I do have a beautiful son, so. Well, thank God for a small miracles. <laughs> Now you get a babysit for your, your beauty. You oh, get a babysitter. Yes, and now will you be wearing that beautiful gold e evening no, gown? I, not. I, I have a black tuxedo oh. dress that <laughs> I just got. So oh, my God, Monica. <laughs> she's paying attention to the dress code. It's the black party. <laughs> yeah, the Dons and Divas extravaganza is going down December 22nd. Monica, you're in there. Hold on. Let's take oh, her yeah. information. We need to get Monica's information quickly before the phone lines drop her. Let's. We need one more caller. Because I said Wendy, I was going to thank you so much. You're welcome, Monica. Monica, hold on. Okay, Monica is online. What line is that, Goose? She's on line two. She's on line two? All right, we need to pick the, pick up the phone for somebody else. We need to give away Ow, these cash. we just dropped Monica. Shaylin, what the <laughs> hell? Oh, man. Oh, let's see here. Monica, is that you? Yes. Okay, good. Oh, okay. Put her on hold. Okay, great. All right. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, am I? Yeah, I want you Don's to come. Dima, to, uh, and Divas? I want you to come to the party. You too. Yeah, what's your name? Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Where are you calling from? Clifton, New Jersey. It's so nice to have you here. What do you do there? Um, I uh, do finance and accounting. Very nice. Did you did you have to go to college for that? No. Mm. I mean, yes, oh. but uh, you know, as long as you have your head on straight and you are. Uh, in other words, there's more coordinated. than coordinated. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Yeah, I I believe in that. You know, I had tons of experience just through um, employment agencies. You're and a self-made woman. Absolutely. Well, you know what? That is a diva. A diva <laughs> is somebody who makes something out of whatever cards life has dealt her. Oh, you so, are awesome, Melissa. I want you at my party. Hold on for a quick moment, and Shaylin's going to take your information. Do not drop your line, okay? I will not. Thank you. All right. Take I care. I love you. I I, oh, by the way, Melissa, mm -hmm. will you be wearing that stunning navy blue dress that you have? Girl, I'm going to be all in black. All right. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, me and Mary J. Blige and our Don, who I've not announced yet because he won't let me, we'll see you at the party. Sounds a little like Puffy. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I'll see you at the party. All right, hon. Take care. Hold on. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh, we're still in the middle of um, the Hour of Truth, and Iman is in the other room, and she'll be coming back in. We're going to talk to her more, so uh, keep it here. It's the Wendy Williams Experience, nonstop till 7 o'clock on 107.5 WBLS. Do you remember the time? You were in Michael Jackson's video, Remember the Time. It's Iman in the studio, everyone. Tell us uh, how you got that invitation, and how was it on the set? Uh, actually, uh, John Singleton, who was directing it, uh -huh. is the one who uh, contacted me and um, thought that I'm the only one who could play uh, uh, a qu an African queen, yes. an Egyptian queen. Yeah. So, hence, I, I was asked if I could be part of that, uh -huh. and I said yes. And it was very funny because uh, the king was Eddie Murphy, oh. and uh, oh. there was this falcon sitting behind us on our throne while we were sitting. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and every time the falcon just about fluttered, uh -huh. he was out of the door. <laughs> and he was scared. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, and I wouldn't move, and he kept on saying, well, she's used to that. Yeah, shit. You're coming from every yeah. Now you um you were married to Spencer Hayward, yes. the basketball player, yes. and out of the that marriage you produced your daughter. Yeah, Zuleika. Yes. Uh, how long were you married to Spencer? God, I don't know. I can't even remember. Ten years? Uh, uh, close to ten years. Okay, something like that. Yeah. Uh, why did that marriage end? Uh just things happen. Yes, things happen. Just over. Yeah. 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 Are you a faithful woman in your relationships? Absolutely. Do you and David have an, an open marriage? Nope. No open marriage. You know, he came with quite a track record. Yeah. Uh, David. Yeah. Um, with men and women. Yeah. Ow. And how do you how do you come to terms with that? Because Star Jones right now, um, the press okay, this show. <laughs> I mean, everybody, you know, everybody's talking about Star. But off They're the talking about Star about what? Uh, her marriage to uh, Al. What about it? 
Well, there are speculations that Al could possibly have dabbled or might possibly still be dabbling in homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Speculation only. But with David, uh, there were numerous reports, you know, during his heyday. This is, you know, well before you. Yeah. So you knew about all this stuff leading up to it. Did you ever have a talk with him? Like, look, do you have... the, the wildness out of your system, whether it's men, women. No, no. I, I, obviously, I didn't have that talk with him because when I met him, mm-hmm. that was already, uh, you know, that out was an, out of, uh, that was a non-existent. Uh, listen, I'm not married to uh, Elton John, so let's yes. make that way. Yes, not married got to you, gay got men. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Flamer. so. laughs> got you. Yeah, so, so, no, that was what he did back then. And, you know, no, absolutely. Yes. We don't have absolutely no open marriage. It's a it's a, a traditional marriage, yeah, monogamous, traditional. absolutely. Traditional. But you both got a lot out of your system prior. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. From you know, from drinking, drugs, you know, yeah. all that stuff is yeah. There's not existing at all. Had you back in your your wilder times? Have you ever been with a woman? No, that was it's not my thing. You ever been propositioned? Oh yeah, Lots. of course, of course. <laughs> well, we're talking about that fashion here. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, Iman, who are your closest friends, and what do they do? Uh, Beth Ann Hardison. All right, that's Kadeem Hardison's mother. mother yeah. She's an agent. Yeah, Tyson Beckford. Yes, and Tyson <laughs> Beckford's agent as well. And she's also happens to be a fan of the show. Hey, Beth Ann. Yeah, she's yeah, my oldest, closest friend. She okay. was also my maid of honor at my wedding. Really? Yeah, she's my closest friend. Oh, so you, were, have you known her all along? Like, were you there? From the day, probably the first week I came to New York. Oh, and how old was Kadeem at that time, if he was oh, even born? Uh, I don't think he was born. Does he call you no. aunt? No, he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't call me aunt. He calls me Iman. Iman. <laughs> yeah, but me and her are as close as I, as any two women could ever be. I mean, yeah. we talk maybe w- once or twice a day. Oh, is that wonderful? Yeah. I I consult with her about anything. Yes. Yeah, and talk to her. Is very there self confident? Is there room in your um in your life to have other close friends? Because yeah, no. I mean, I do have a lot of other close friends. But she's but your best but friend. She's my best friend. She's a person that I can tell her anything and will not judge me. Yes. And will help me in, in any way that I might need. And also, most importantly, that will just give me an ear. Yes. Yeah. Without, you know, don't give me your Don't opinions. judgments and opinions. Uh, yeah. But, you know. Do you have a second runner-up or everybody else is just kind of... No, my assistant, Lorraine Critch. She's been, uh, I've known her as a friend and then became my assistant 10 years ago. But I've known her 25 years. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Very nice. Yeah. Now, are there any um, 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 other models that you're very close with or have ever been close with? For instance, yeah, did you it, go it, to Christy Brinkley, Billy Joel wedding? No. No, I'm I, Chrissy Brinkley. I don't know how that works. Are you I'm friends not, with Oprah? Uh, friends, but not uh, but not very close friends. Were you at the Great Women? At the, the Legends Ball. The yeah. Legends Ball. Yes, yes, and yeah. yeah. No, it was an amazing week. Yes. Yeah. Because for for us women, amazing because the women part of it. Yes. Uh, she was honoring 25 women who made a whole difference in her life, mm-hmm. and the young ones that have benefited mm-hmm. from it. Now, now, Iman, you're from Africa. Yeah. Do you uh, find that? A lot of times, the weight of the world is resting on your, on your shoulders regarding um, charity yeah, visits. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have always chosen um, children charities, mm-hmm. uh, especially in Africa, because those are the ones who really fall through the cracks. Yeah. So I'm uh, will be affiliated to a particular charity uh, called Keep a Child Alive, mm-hmm. which um, we're happy to to have known. Alicia Keys has been an ambassador mm-hmm. for it last I've, year. Yes. So she she does that part, and I'm going to be doing next year a whole one separate event. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. What's the last celebrity wedding that you've been to? Oh God, I, I don't think I've ever been to one. <laughs> what about the last baby shower? Uh, I don't think I have been to one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most of the people is regular people, not celebrities. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. regular people. I yeah. like that. Yeah. I like that. So now, Iman, everybody's got this new book out, and it's called The, the Beauty. Beauty of Color. It's Iman's ultimate guide to skin of color. Yeah. Now, I already told you that tomorrow um, in New York, uh, in, New in, Jersey, in, in the tri state area, in Secaucus, New Jersey, she's signing copies of her book at the Sam's Club in Secaucus. Yes. From 12th. Uh, 12- 12 to 12.30. 12 to 12.30. Yeah. And then you're going to be at a bunch of different Dwayne Reed stores. Actually, I'm not going to be there. <clears throat> uh, my makeup team is going to be there from noon to 5 p.m. at three Dwayne Reeds. The oh. first one is at, in bronze at 58 Fordham Road. And that's, that's, yeah. From noon to five. Noon to mm-hmm. five. Dwayne Reed also on Ralph Avenue in Brooklyn. 
And then Dwayne Reed on Jamaica Avenue in Queens, 12 noon to 5 p.m. For all three of those Dwayne Reeds. And the first 10 customers Mm -hmm. who will get a makeover there will have a free book also. How wonderful. Now, can people find out all of this information by going to imancosmetics.com? Absolutely, where you can find the makeup nationally because it's available in Walmart, Walmart. Walgreens, Target, yes. Dwayne Reed, and across the board. Yes. And uh, and anything else you would need to know about uh, what the brand is about. Are, have you ever been? Have you ever considered hawking your makeup on QVC or HSN? I actually did uh, an introduction in 1994 when I started Iman Cosmetics, mm-hmm. and it sold out in the first 20 minutes. Uh, and so. and and you've never thought about like going back because everybody's like uh, people buy online or through catalogs or yeah. ordering on TV. But you're doing well on your own. Anyway. Um, yeah, I'm doing well on my own, but I, I'm. I've been asked several times QVC, so I'm thinking of doing maybe specific kits, but that's probably in the, in the future. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got to know your limits. you got to have some time left over for David, for, for, for yourself. What do you do on your own? Do you garden? Do you? I love gardening. I love knitting. I'm a great cook. I'm a t- domestic diva. Yeah, that's wonderful. Do you have help at your house? It's just yes. the, well, you have your five year old now. Yeah, well, so. yeah, I have I have a living nanny. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, but I take my little one to school in the morning and I pick her up in the afternoon. Yeah, uh, and I cook at night at home I almost. What are you night. making for dinner tonight? Uh, she- uh, uh, shepherd's pie, which is an English traditional. Food. Now, are you getting that over at Gristini's or are you no, actually going to no, be? No, no, no. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. The rolling time. dough. Oh, I did. I made oh. this earlier, honey. No. <laughs> Iman is delightful speaking with you. One more thing. Yeah. How is you, How have your measurements changed from when you were at the height of modeling? Oh, God. I was a size two, probably, mm-hmm. when I started. And what size are you now? A six. You can live with that. I can live with that. You look damn good, <laughs> chick. Have you ever gotten plastic surgery? No. Would you consider it? Mm, no, I'm not against it. Okay. But if it's done well, because I've seen people don't look good on it. Yes. You know, they're too tight. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. If it doesn't make you look better, yes. don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Thank you, darling. You're not as bad as they said. Oh, oh how <laughs> dare them? How dare them? <laughs> <laughs> Iman, please yeah, come yeah, back yeah, anytime yeah, I will. you want. I will, thank you. Everybody, May, can you take a picture with me? Uh, me with you? <laughs> Boy, this is like the Beauty and the Beast if I've ever seen it. <laughs> Go to her website, find out about all the locations. ImanCosmetics.com. Pick up her makeup, her books. Hey, this is Iman. She's a supermodel. I'm going to take a picture. Damn. <laughs> Wendy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. Yeah, this your boy Lloyd. This is Tawanda Braxton. Hey, what's up? This is Sierra. And right now you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. We got a little surprise for you all. Dinesh is coming in the studio for Making of the Band. Season three. Three. Well, Nicole, you're not Dinosh. <laughs> oh, Dinosh is running. Hey, Dinosh. No, you didn't bring me a gift. I Thank did. you. Fa la 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 la. Give me that. All right. Older sister's Wendy's. Your older sister's name is Wendy? Oh, okay. Have a seat. With your black cherry charms, lollipop t shirt, and your purple velour capri pants. Oh, well, no, they're not capris. They're actually tucked in your boots. Oh, actually, no. They stopped. Okay. Right uh-huh. You survived the snow. I did. And here you I are. I almost slipped and broke my neck coming out. I was like, I should have put on some sneakers. Now, I have to say that I have not been watching Making of the Band 3. Um, not because I'm not a fan, but because it doesn't come on at the times that I'm sitting in front of my TV or something. There's always something I had something to TV with myself, so. You did? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, so. That you didn't make the band. No, I did not. But you've done background singing for Mary J. Blige <laughs> and and Missy Elliott. Is that is that, am I understanding that correctly? Actually, I wor- I sang background for Faith Evans. Oh, for Faith. Yeah. But I did do some dancing with Missy, some vid- videos and several other people. Now the word has it. Now I'm going on the word because, like I said, I don't watch. <laughs> the COVID but word. That that you were on making of the band yes. three, and you had a bit of an elitist attitude because you've worked professionally with Missy and faith right. and you felt and, and you kind of had the, the attitude right even if you had the talent the attitude might have been the thing that got you cut from the band it could have been yeah um i you know just in 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 my defense and to just set the record straight mm-hmm. it wasn't so much about i had an elitist attitude mm-hmm. i felt and i 
always tried to explain to the girls that I want to help. It mm-hmm. wasn't about, you know, I was more experienced than some of the girls. Some of the girls did have experience, but I wanted to lend experience, and that's all it really was. Yeah. If I knew something, why would I hold it back? Like some of the other competitions you see where girls are very cutthroat and they don't want to say, or oh, I'm not going to tell her that yeah. her bra's showing, or, you know, right, to be shady. Right, and it, right. wasn't, it wasn't so much that I was trying to command or be a dictator, uh-huh. as I was called. Right. You know, but. I was really just trying to help and sometimes you know I, I was really serious about this being on the band so it may have come off a little harsh at times yeah so so have, have any other opportunities come your way or as a result of your previous experience as well as making of the band I mean yeah. are, you, are you just crap out of luck now <laughs> no what are you doing well actually prior to this I was working on I was in the studio and I was working on stuff on music right a now. solo CD yeah so right now I'm actually working on a single that will be out hopefully very soon. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm working with uh, some really great people mm-hmm. that you know that I was working with before. So it, it didn't stop anything. It's just like hopefully this will help. If not, my grind was mm-hmm. still you know it's consistent. It's not stopping me. It's mm-hmm. actually giving me more confidence to you know keep doing what I'm doing. So how was it living there in the house with all of your competitors? It was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even front. I it was hard. We were in a very confined space. Mm-hmm. Um, bunk beds like you like you say you didn't get to see the show right. but it was literally like some army barracks like mm. very very basic living so it was hard you know two bathrooms 21 girls wow you gotta do hair and makeup you gotta Fine. warm up you got people screaming in your ear people just did you nuts. did you get to see much of puffy but you know we yeah. only saw diddy when it was time for to someone to go home mm-hmm. so and mm-hmm. a, occasionally he'd come around and Give us the pep talk and be like, this is what I need from you. This is what I expect. Mm -hmm. So do what you got to do. See you when Mm -hmm. I see you. Now, why do you think you didn't make the ban? Oh, geez. It could be so many reasons. I mean, being in the industry, you know, just working, I I know it. I was the tallest. I was one of the tallest girls. Mm -hmm. Um, It could have been... They want small girls. Yeah, you see, know, height can be a factor. If you did, you see that? Well, the, all the girls are sort of that made the band are all kind of similar in size. No, and but height. but I'm five eleven, and I right. know I know that that height it can plays a part right. when you're a performer, right. not necessarily when you're on the radio. Exactly. But like if you're an actress and you're right. going for a role, and the lead man is uh, smaller than you, then you you don't get it. Out of luck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, there could have been that. You know, Diddy mentioned a couple of things that he was looking for chemistry. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I knew too much. Maybe I didn't have the right look for mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. Did Aubrey have the look that Diddy particularly loved? I think because Aubrey- I don't even watch the show, and I, you know, their their their, their rep- relationship has become legendary to me. Not that I know anything, <laughs> right? But that he might have favored her, a cute girl, and all. You know, he may have. You mm-hmm. know, she has a look that a lot of people can identify with. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, you know what I mean. Yeah, and. She was a familiar face too, mm. so that could have been mm-hmm. where that could have worked in her favor. Now, Jason told me mm-hmm. that you're working with Lori Ann, the choreographer. Yeah, that's like uh, what. What are you guys working on? Well, she's just been someone that I've worked with in the industry. She's hired me for several jobs um, prior know, prior to this. Yeah. So you knew her when you got on the band. I did. Oh, okay. I actually did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe one of the reasons that you didn't get it is because you were too much of an industry insider already. It could have been. Yeah. It could have been. You know, some people are kind of like she knows too much or maybe we can't what need to mold somebody I don't know yeah yeah somebody you know? raw that you know has been untainted and unjaded by the business yeah <laughs> so what happened when your group she performed right. at the um, the Backstreet Boys concert <laughs> um everything horrible no we literally went out on stage and I think got shook I think we all just got hype it was overwhelming um I know that when we have like this little intro thing that we do and then we do an acapella to bring the song in. Mm. So I lead the acapella mm. and I guess I came in a little sharp. I didn't have a note. I didn't have a reference for a note. So I just hit my note mm. and assumed everyone would fall in line. Um, some of the girls did. And then I think when like the third note came in, it was like, I didn't really know what was happening. I was just like, I tried to cut it off as soon as possible. Yeah. So we got booed a little bit, but, you know, I cut Excuse it off. Excuse me. Did they get booed a little bit or a lot of bit? <laughs> no. Oh. Let me say one thing about MTV or television in general. Okay. There's a lot of editing going on. Okay. So what you see is definitely over exaggerated mm-hmm. you know they they over exaggerate sound bites and things like that so um but you know we got right into the song and 
we pulled it off. We pu- we pulled it back together, but it was a little harsh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did our best, and we had a good time at the end of the day. Now, uh, Dinosh, everybody's in the studio for Making It the Band 3. Who were your favorite picks? I mean, if you didn't make it, who who actually made it? And, and who, where's my list of who actually made it? I can tell you. It? All right, well, who, who are your favorite picks? Okay, my favorite picks... We had to actually do this exercise where we had to pick a band. Mm-hmm. Who uh, So, excluding myself, my band was Aubrey, Juanita, Shannon, um, Dawn, and I guess outside of myself, I probably would have picked either Tequita or Dominique. I don't know. Okay. Did all those girls make it? I didn't watch last night. Did the did the girls? Everyone make it? but myself. But you. But <laughs> and you. Andrea made it. Yeah. 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 So. So I mean, you know. So you go back to where are you from? I'm from Toronto, but I live here. I've been here for like eight years grinding. So yeah. So you go back to your house and, yeah. and you grind and. and I and I wish you. How old are you? I'm 28 years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you grind. You got you got some more grinding years left. Yes. Why not? I've got you know? a few. So. Do you have children? No, I don't. Are you, are you in love? Yes, I am. Were you in love at the time of making the band going? Yes, on? I was, and thank goodness I had somebody because I would not have gotten through it without him and God. <laughs> is is he is he um, a corporate dude or no? Like a, he's in the industry. Uh huh. Yeah. So but, he understands and yeah. Yeah. He yeah. understands. Well, I wish you well. Thank you. Dinesh. Can I say something? What? You are really pretty. Oh, this is what you have really nice skin. I, I'm like not. You know what? It's I funny? mean, I know. All, I listen to your show, and I know all the controversy and Hi. stuff, and the people talk about everything that's going on. And yeah. Stuff, but you're like really striking. Thank you. Thank you very and I'm much. Not just, you know. No. And open my gift, please. Oh. Okay. I want you to look at my gift. All right. Oh wow, Iman brought you gifts. I yeah. feel so. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, Iman brought not, me a bunch of makeup and all of that. Licorice. Oh my I gosh, like licorice. I love licorice. Yeah. Oh, Dinosh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh no, my gosh, just kidding. I've got a lifetime supply of Twizzlers and what? It's a low-fat candy. Yes, I I know, which is why I love licorice so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome, much, and Dinesh. I want to thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. I really appreciate thank you very it. much for coming. Nice I like you. to see the walkaways. Okay, that means you know you get up and you walk away. All right, um, bye everybody. Thank you. All right, bye. Bye. All right. Dinesh, you're, uh Taryn's going to come out with you. Okay. And um, well, it's Dinesh, everybody. Now my my paperwork is covered with licorice and makeup. I just saw my scooter come in as I was speaking with Dinesh. Please, I give him a pack of this licorice to chill him out, wind him up, turn on Jimmy Neutron. He'll be fine. Mm-hmm. No school today. You know how that is. So, Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer, I love you. I, I really do love you. But, Jennifer, you really got to get over it. And if I were um, Mark Anthony, I would divorce you right now based on what I'm about to tell you. Jennifer Lopez has reportedly sent a present to Ben Affleck. Mommy! Hi, honey. Hi, <laughs> honey. Aww. Hi, baby. Wow. All right. Ma- mommy's, ta- mommy's talking about one of your favorite oh, girls, Jennifer. Mommy. Licorice. Mommy. Do, you, do you want some? Yeah. Okay. So, when, when, when can I have pizza? All right, I'm going to When can I have Pizza. I'm going to order you pizza as soon as I finish talking about Jennifer Lopez. Right? Jennifer Lopez Mommy, and Beyonce. Mommy, uh-huh. Mommy, did you say this one thing? What? No, no. Hold on. Hi. What? Oh, boy. He's being whispered, too. There's one Thing. There's one thing I want to say about Don's and Divas 2005. What do you want to say about Don's and Divas 2005? Where's the money? Where's the money? <laughs> 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 You're killing me, kid. I could. When? When? When can I have pizza? Uh, just a moment. Can mom? Alright, mommy's Where's gonna finish. My candy? Wait, your candy's right here. <laughs> Don't eat this whole bag here. There you go. Don't eat that whole bag. I'll be right in the office to order pizza. Thank you. Oh, my guys. The storm just hit. <laughs> my guys. <laughs> my guys have arrived. Oh, gosh. Hurricane Kev. <laughs> oh, Hurricane Kevin's <laughs> a mess. That's my life. All right. Jennifer Lopez has reportedly sent a baby present to Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner's new daughter, Violet. 
She did this earlier this month when they had the baby. You know, Jennifer was engaged to Ben last year. And the gift basket, they say, was filled with goodies for the new baby, Violet. And here's what a source says. Jennifer will always have a special place in her heart for Ben. You know what? There is no room for a special place, Jennifer. And that's why your damn relationships fail. You don't know when to say when. And you can call me a boon chench if you want. But I'm telling you right now, if I were Mark Anthony, I'd divorce you. Because you don't know how to let go and focus. What? Am I out of order for saying that? Are you out of your mind? You were supposed to burn his name from your Blackberry and your phone books and not keep in touch. And I don't... What? Mark Anthony, you better stay on top of that woman. You better keep her in line. <laughs> oh, what am I saying? <laughs> I mean, she couldn't even slip and do that, like on the low, like, you know, send a gift. Because she probably had one of her servants go out and get the basket together or whatnot. As opposed to on the DL, just sending him a congratulatory and him not telling his new wife, Jennifer Gardner, where he got it and all like that. You know what, Jennifer? Um, That was a real pathetic move. That was real pathetic. I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. Melange is in Queens, and she says, Wendy, don't let them bitches come to your party. Real divas know that no no glove, no love. Talking about the girl with the, her and her friend. Yeah, the horse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know. All right, you guys, keep it here. We're going to wind up the show after these messages. I'm going to go order some pizza and make sure that somebody's not ODing on licorice. Thank you. <laughs> Wendy, man. My brother, he's 28 years old, has four children by four different women. This heifer called my mother yesterday. She's like, he got my sister pregnant. I want the money back for the abortion. The heifer showed up at my house with a receipt. I fell out. The Wendy Williams Experience. It's Wendy. The greatest show on earth. Wendy Williams Experience. Yeah. It's the experience, and we're about to give away those passes for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. I encourage the men to call and represent on the phones. Ladies, of course, you are in on this, too, because sisters be doing it for our sales. But I'm looking for my Dons as well. Um, Even though the real is is that the players have been running up on me and my crew uh, since we started announcing this. And they've been going out and actually buying their tickets. They don't have time to dilly-dally on the telephone, you know. I love you, Wendy, but I'm not calling the 1-800 telephone number to uh, win. I'll just get my tickets because that's what a real Don do. This hour of the Wendy Williams Experience is brought to you by the New York Post. And before I give away these passes for the Dons and Divas extravaganza, a big shout out to um, everybody in Harlem. Don't forget Black Star Music has got your passes for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. 212-234-6244. I am going to be away on um, business all next week. So a bunch of best of shows are going to be playing. But I feel like I've given you all enough information that while I'm gone, um, you'll be able to. And by the way, I've already pre-taped myself saying, you know, it's now time to call and win. So we'll be making winners behind the scenes. Every single day, every single hour next week while I'm gone. So I want you to know that. But in addition to that, um, I hope that I've plied you with enough telephone numbers and information that if you're looking just to purchase your passes, you can do that. And you can start by going to probably the most comprehensive Dons and Divas website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com. Because when you go to my website, you'll be able to see all five boroughs and where you can get tickets there. You'll be able to see New Jersey and the telephone number to get tickets. You'll be able to um, press a button button when you get to my website and actually purchase tickets right there on my website. So, you know, there you have it. These tickets are not available at Ticketmaster. Um, This is a very exclusive party, as were the five previous Dons and Divas extravaganza. For those of you who've been to the parties, you know that these parties are well worth... um, you know, all the all the drama, I guess. This year's party uh, is themed the black party. So please have your black, have it on, be wearing it. Wearing a red dress is not going to get you in. And I don't care if you're fine as wine. You know, you will not be the one to stick out at my party. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm not even, you know, my assistant Nicole, Nicole was like, Wendy, so what color are you wearing? I said, black. 
<laughs> you know, if I have everybody else wearing black, why wouldn't I wear black? So she said, well, maybe you should wear another color to stick out. I said, no. You know, I stick out because I'm giant. <laughs> you know, I, I stick out anyway. Okay, I, I do, damn sure know I'll be the, if not the tallest woman, one of the tallest women in the party. So I stick out any damn way. You know, I stick out with my attitude. <laughs> um, but so y y I'm sorry, your red dress looks real cute, but you're not sticking out that damn much. People be walking up to you all night. Wendy, you wore a red dress after? No, that's not <laughs> Wendy. That is um, Cindy from Kew Gardens who decided, uh, -uh Cindy, you will be left right out on the sidewalk. I'm sorry. Shout out to Question Mark Entertainment and Face Down Entertainment. You guys have been working tirelessly for this party. Hours and hours and hours of open bar. The VIP treats are great. We got we got gift bags in the VIP. But I can tell you one thing. They've dined out and divvied out this whole party where everybody will feel like a VIP. You know, that open bar is not just for VIP. It's for the whole damn party. And furthermore, the, the hors d'oeuvres are, are for the whole party. People will be walking around with hors d'oeuvres and stuff. Special shout out to Demetrio Furs and, and Courtesy Lincoln Mercury in the Bronx. Steve Madden Shoes. Shout out to Martel um, Cognac, you know, the XO. We love that. Shout out to Gilliard Clothing. Jamaican and Adam working over there. Hard for the money. I'm about to go to the phones. 866-GET-WENDY. Shout out to Dante Wilder over at Gilliard Clothing. They are the premier denim line for men in stores now. And you can go to Gilliard's website to find out more about them. G-I-L-Y-A-R-D. And then M-F-G. GilliardMFG.com. So, um, you know, Gilliard Clothing is tricking out the entire uh, VIP section. Also, at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza, um, if you're like me, um, you know, you, you like a lot of different drinks. But if you have a favorite like me, your favorite is champagne. I love champagne. And I was privileged to discover a brand new line of champagne uh, to the United States. It's been legendary in, in Europe. Um, apparently, Giorgio Vaselli Champagne. Um, they've got, uh, f you know, four different lines of the champagne. The Brut, the Premium Crew Brut, the Grand Crew Vintage, and then the Grand Brut, uh, Grand Crew Brut Rosé. And we're going to be premiering Giorgio Vaselli Champagne at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza as well. Uh, so let's hit the telephones and see who we have. <clears throat> Is there anybody there? Yeah. Hello? Yes. Hi. How you doing? Oh, hi. Oh, uh, man. Well, How you doing, Wendy? Well, thank you for rising to the occasion. Oh, definitely. You know that. You oh, know that. Okay, tell me all. First of all, what's your name? My name is Lloyd. Okay, what do you do, Lloyd? I work for the airlines. I'm a flight attendant. Oh, okay. Well, will you be in town on December 22nd? Oh, definitely. I don't work during the holidays. Have you ever been to a Dons and Divas extravaganza? Never. Never. That's why I'm so excited about it now. Well, now, will you be wearing your navy blue suit? Navy blue, of course not. Ah. Maybe, maybe my black Gianco Ferrer or something like uh, that. Oh, the man yeah. does have taste. And you will be in the building. We're going to put you on hold, Lloyd. We're going to take all your information. Congratulations. Thank you, Wendy. And Lloyd, I yes. would advise, I. where do you live? I live in, in Harlem. Well, you know, okay, so then you could just grab a yellow cab and stagger back home, home right? <laughs> That's not going to be any problem. Okay, good, because there's going to be a lot of booze going on. Oh, I don't have a car anyway. <laughs> okay, good. Hold on a moment. You don't need a car when you live in, in Manhattan. Nope, oh, nope. You oh, sure don't. Hold on, Lloyd. And let's take another telephone call because I told you I got a pair of passes. Hello? Hello, Wendy? Hi. Hi. Um, first of all, I just want to say that little moment with your son was so cute. Oh, thank you. And number two, I was so mad at you yesterday. Why? Because you said the names to make another band and I, and I thought that they were the right names. But a couple of the names that you said were wrong. The interesting thing is that I got a really, really um, nasty fax from a listener named Dave <clears throat> who said that because I gave away those names and I also said that Jamie Foxx was going to get killed in that movie that he was just in, <gasps> that, you know, why do I have to spoil things for people and he's not going to listen to the show anymore? I was like, wow, he's way too involved, dude. I was so mad at you yesterday and then I watched it and it wasn't true. And yeah. then um, I was, <clears throat> like when I found out that one of the people that I wanted to be on the band, wasn't on the band. Yeah. I was so excited from when you said it, then I was so disappointed, then I was mad all over again. Yeah, well, I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. Hey, look, thanks for calling. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Hello. Let's hit the phones. Let's let's see, just see who we got because she she know about the passes. Hello. Turn your turn your thing down. Hello. So yeah. Turn oh, your ready? yeah. Turn your radio down though. Hi, I'm Michael Levert. Uh, Joe Levert's son. How are you? What is your first name? Lamica. Oh, I thought he said for Micah. No, hello, Micah. 
How are you? Fine, thanks. Um, I'm trying to get some uh, tickets for my mom to the um, Dimes and Divas <clears throat> party. Well, what do you does, think that'll be possible? What does your mom do that makes her a diva? Well, my mom... She snared Gerald Levert, you're supposed to say. My mom's a marketer. <clears throat> no, you're supposed to say she snared Gerald Levert. What? Hey, that, hey, that's diva enough. She must be doing something. <laughs> Your daddy got it going on. Thank you. I appreciate He's it. He's the teddy bear. Lots of other women think that, too. Oh, oh, and therein lies the problem. Your poor yeah. mother, I bet you she needs a good... Are your parents still married? Uh, nah, no. Oh, they've been divorced. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But they're still good friends. They're still friends. Hey, does your daddy pay child support on time? Oh, of course. He's a good father. He's a real good father. Oh, good. I just saw him last week. Now, how old are you, kiddo? I'm 15. Oh, good. And so you got through on the telephone. Now, do you live in New York? I live in New Jersey. And your mom lives in New Jersey, too? Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm going to give you a pair of passes. I want your mom to be at the party, okay? Oh, hold on. Let me put my mom with you. Oh, okay. <clears throat> for Michael LaVert's mom. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Miss LaVert. Do you still carry the last name? Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> my son, I have the best son in the world. He won you some passes. He did. Of oh, my God, you know. Thank you, honey. <laughs> oh my God, my son is in the car with me, and I had no idea he was dialing the number. Son, honey, he was like, "Mom, I'm gonna win you some tickets for Christmas." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, son. Good looking out. Good looking out." Oh. He's been trying for days. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you listened to the show, and I'm. I want to see you at the party, so we're gonna get you these passes. December 22nd. The place to be is. Mm, I can't say. You'll, okay. You'll find out. Fine. You'll, you'll now listen. Are you going to wear that beautiful sequins dress that you have? The pink, oh, he, the pink one. The, the pink one. No, it has to be black. The, black only. Here you go. You understand? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So look, we're going to put you on hold and take all of your information. Thank you so much for listening and happy Thank holiday. You, and you I, as well. And I'll see you on Thursday, December twenty second. Yes, you will. Hang, the place to be. Ho. Hang on. What she should probably be doing is getting telephone numbers before calls get dropped. Yeah, because that's one of the renovations that we have to do here at BLS. We have to. Oh my gosh! It's about to. Re we have. Wendy Williams, you don't know me. I'm not your punching bag. You gon' blow me up. Girl, better leave me alone before I buy your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams, experience, experience, experience. We have to do our rejoin. Hey, everybody. Woo! How you doing? All right. Uh. Hey, Philly. Hey, Delaware. I'm going to be on vacation next week, so you're going to be hearing nothing but best ofs. I want to leave you all with a telephone number, though, uh, to get your Dons and Divas extravaganza passes, too. Connecticut, I got a telephone number for you as well. Oh. Anybody in Memphis? Anybody in L.A.? Any of you all uh, down south? Anybody's going to be in New York City for December 22nd? Um, you make sure that you uh, stop by and say hi, chair. Gosh, I can't find my um, Dons and Divas extravaganza. T oh, here you go. Okay, and then we got to gossip. We got to we got to work our way uh, through the rest of the show. All right, you ready, Philly, Delaware? 302-250-6650. I love our Don, but I'm a little disappointed that you know he won't let me say yet who. He is, and that he'll be hosting a party with Mary J. Blige. And and I'm going to be away all next week, so there'll be nothing but best of shows, which means that you won't find out who the Don is until the Monday that I return. But rest assured, get your tickets right now. This is the party of the year. 302-250-6650 for Philly and Delaware. In Connecticut, there's a dude named Ike, and he happens to own a hair salon in Hartford called Hair Tribe. And you can give Ike a call and get your tickets, too, so we can get this thing popping. 860-985-3232. Uh, and um, hopefully I'll see all of you all at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. Now, there are a few things that I was going to talk with you all about, which, unfortunately, the day has just slipped by. I want to thank Iman, the supermodel, for coming in. Um, go to her website. Let me move all this licorice. Um, ImanCosmetics.com. 
And uh, New York City, uh, you keep it here because I have more information regarding her appearances locally. And also, thank you to Dinesh for making of the band. Now, David Schwimmer, everybody, is making his Broadway debut. We know him from Friends. He's going to be in the Kane Mutiny Court Martial. And so... Um, is that somebody? Is that somebody ringing the phone? I know. I thought about that when I was getting the story, but I was like, you know what? Some people may, might care. Nobody gives a damn. Um. All right. So we'll, we'll skip that. We'll go ahead. Wait. Hold on. Turn off my mic for a second, so I, so I can cough. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> and also, Nicole Ritchie. Okay, so first of all, according to uh, published reports and people, um, they say that the couple split up and a lot of the part of the breakup is due to Nicole Ritchie's moodiness. They called off their engagement of nine months. The way they were supposed to be actually originally getting married is the culmination of the Simple Life season, whatever this would be. And they're supposed to be getting married on the camera. Um, but... The fallout with Paris, and of course, there's no Simple Life, um, you know, festivities happening with the Simple Life show. But here's another component that people say was the the deal breaker. Nicole is very moody doing due to this weight loss. They they say, and to keep that weight down, she goes in and out of you know, I want a damn biscuit, you know, like that. <laughs> you know, Adam, of course, her DJ AM. You know, he used to weigh three hundred and like fifty pounds, so he lost a lot of weight too. But he got gastric bypass surgery, so. He still technically can eat just in small amounts. Um, hello? Hello, hello. Hey, it's Wendy. What's going on? How you doing, Wendy? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? Well, let me just guess. You're looking for passes for the Dons and Divas extravaganza? Yeah, I need to know what's good. You know, it's my change trying to be in the building. <laughs> well, you know, we are looking for the Don of the Dons for the Divas. Right, you talking to him? So, I'm right here. What you working with? What are you driving up in? We ain't driving. We getting sharpened that night. Oh. We leaving the whip to the garage that night. Okay. And and what will you be wearing? Oh, we wear all black. You know what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the Gucci thing that night. I'm the Gucci man. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Now, are you? Um, is it is it a danger? Is it a hot button for me to ask you where you work? Oh, where I work at? That's not a problem. I work for Merslin and Niche. Oh. Well, what do you do there? I'm a program director. I program the whole building. I run everything. Okay, okay. Now, where do you live? Because I can give you telephone numbers, you know, to get your passes. I'm in Jersey. We doing it in Jersey. We need we need to know what's the what's the ticket location in Jersey. Now, player, player, you realize that we're working with, you know, nonstop music, nonstop drinks. Non-stop women, food. It's going to be just that, that non-stop hot boy party. Right. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I, I was I was at the one last year in Atlantic City. Oh, oh okay. So you know. So I don't have to explain. Who are you coming yeah. with? I'm coming with my whole team. We stay to stay. We cover about 100 deep. I just need to know where I can get these tickets from, you know? Jeez. Well, I hope they can handle your situation. Let me start by giving you the telephone number here. Here's a 973 in Jersey. Okay. Okay, it's 973 Four one eight seven thousand. Okay. Okay. Then I have my man Race and my man Qua at nine seven three four one eight three zero one nine. Okay. Plus, by the way, do you wear fur? Yeah, we doing the fur thing, but being that you know every year it was a fur thing, we just gonna keep it simple that night. We get chauffeur, so we ain't trying to have nothing too heavy. We try to be in and out the building. Yeah, throw the fur in the car, leave it with the driver. Exactly. I hear that. Well, in Manhattan, there's a furrier named Demetrio Furs, and he happens to have tickets to it. Two one two six nine five eighty four sixty nine. Or you can always go to my website. If you lose any of these telephone numbers, it's thewendywilliamsexperience.com. Now you know Mary J. Blige is our diva. Right. And I haven't disclosed who our Don is, but something tells me if you all bumped into each other, you would get along very well. Right, right, right. Yes, yes. But we need to let everybody know I'm the Don for the evening. Fontaine. Fontaine <laughs> from Jersey. All right. Okay? Thank you, Fontaine. I'll see you December 22nd. All right, Wendy. Take care. All right. Hey, Fontaine, I forgot to give you Carlin's Cut-Ups in Linden, New Jersey. They've got the Mots. They've got your passes for the Dons and Divas, too. Shout out to Les Ness. I love you all for listening today, and I will be 
um, on vacation next week, so it'll be nothing but best of shows. But the winning continues with the Dons and Divas extravaganza, and um, you all be easy. Enjoy your holiday, and we'll talk um, a few Mondays from now or something. Oh, bye. Peace party, people. <laughs> See you later. Cause I'm saying bye bye. Good night. Program complete. Oh, gosh. I'm so glad I have this extra hour with you all. Because I have so much still on the table. And so we'll talk. It's the bonus hour of the Wendy Williams Experience. Shout out to Brooklyn. Les Ness got tickets for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. So, you know, he doesn't want to give his number or anything. But if you see him roll up on him and ask him, we're the tickets killer. Coming up on the bonus hour, we'll talk about Mm, Tevin Campbell, Daddy Yankee, Ow. got a Terrence Howard story, and um, you all keep it here, okay? I'm taking your phone calls, and we've got passes for the extravagance. 107.5 WBLS, New York. She's a mother. Hey, Mommy. Happy so good. Here. Oh, uh, don't drop it on the floor. Germs. She's crafty. I know how to paint. I can sew. I do a little cooking. She's a singer. Struggle. In and out. Ups and downs. Uh, Put that like, where? Whoa, Back whoa. There. She drops it like it's hot. Brown juice in one hand and get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dash! What did that have to do with anything? She spazzes out. No, you didn't tear up your 40 something year old body! No! She's gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's the queen of all media. Wendy Williams. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, love, love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. Wendy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS New York. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the live show on the radio. Don't you know? This hour of the Wendy Williams Experience is being brought to you by one of my favorite places. Shout out to the, w, to the WBLS sales department. You know, for what it's worth, you guys um, have really been... At least how I can I can see it, bringing in accounts that are really of interest. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it, you know what I, you know what I'm saying? Like like stuff that I actually use. <laughs> you can actually listen to the commercial stop sets here at WBLS and hear some useful mess. <laughs> hey, plastic surgery. This hour of the show is brought to you by Home Goods. Who goes to Home Goods? Raise your hand. Me. I'm raising everything. How Home Goods for everything? Hey. <laughs> what? I go to the Home Goods right there at the Wayne Town Center in the same plaza as Ben and Eddie. They own B&B Jewelers, big sponsors of the Dons and Divas. I go to the Home Goods in Wayne Town Center. I go to B&B Jewelry, and then I go right next door to um, the Jewelry Exchange where B&B Jewelry is, and sometimes I get my nails done there. <sighs> How you doing? How you doing? Dear Wendy, I work in the HIV field. Please let those girls know that their lives are not over, but that's only if they stop using drugs. You are absolutely right that drugs do enormous amount of damage to your immune system. If they stop now, they might not even need to start medication for a couple of years. Tell them to get in contact with the New York City Department of Health or the Gay Men's Health Crisis to find a support group. The city provides medical care for those with HIV, but who can't afford it? That's from Jay. Jay, you know what? <clears throat> Why is it that I felt that those two girls aren't going to stop doing what they're doing? If anything, the one that was lying in the bed with the HIV will probably become more rec reckless and like, you know, damn the world. I'm taking everybody out with me. And she'll run her way through the industry, messing around with rappers who bring it back to their girlfriends, who the girlfriends kiss the babies on the mouth goodbye for school. You know, the baby might have a little cut because she fell or he fell and bumped his lip. And you know where that where that tooth is. And now there's an open sore on the lip. Mommy kisses it after she kissed daddy's tip last night after he kissed the girl with the HIV the night before. And that's how it gets started. Circle of death. It's a circle of death. I don't feel sorry for them. Advice hour was two hours ago, so now I'm back to my normal emotions. I don't feel sorry for them. 
<clears throat> I feel as though they knew what they were doing all along. Two, two 26-year-old women running around the industry on e-pills and God only knows what else. Hi. Sleeping, on, sleeping with men who don't want them for anything but to be a trick and a tramp. And then she calls me telling me they were diagnosed yesterday. One of them with HIV. <clears throat> the other one, no doubt, will get her positive diagnosis six months from now when she goes back. And she's calling me asking me what she should do. Telling me she got her black dress all ready for the deity. What? I don't want you there. Real divas know how to protect themselves. Now, granted, this could happen to any one of us. But it's all in the way you got it. You know, how people judge you. They got it through Hodum. Little sister, I'm sorry, but I don't feel sorry for you. And you don't need to be at a party because you're not a diva. Real divas, no, no glove, no love. And real divas have a job by 26. You could have at least done the Kim Porter thing and locked these men down, you know, made them make you into, you know, turn it into a damn viable business. And I'm saying respect to you, Kim Porter, in the, in the, in the gamut of things. These whores running around, nobody wants them. And now they're going, now they just found out yesterday, so they got all holidays and all through the years to just spread that through everybody. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Talking about they'll be up in my party. You wear a red dress. You're the exception. <laughs> you wear the red dress so we know what to say to you when you get to the door. Oh Dummy. Mind you, like one in ten people is sick, so it's not, you know, but I'm just saying, but the way that all happened and she called up and she was telling and I appreciate the honesty, but what does she expect me to say? But I was playing it off pretty good when she called, wasn't I? Yes. I, I was, you know, all like, honey, honey, you know, but, you know, all I need is a moment to remove myself from a situation so I can act the way I really feel as opposed to waiting until the microphones close and then basing, you know, here in the studio. Rushing my Botox along. How's my forehead look? <laughs> you know, I don't even like to furl my eyebrow to test it because, you know what I mean, I don't want to have to go back sooner than I should. You know, I don't want to rush it along. <laughs> Ugh. Chris Rock is not going to host the next um, Academy Awards. He says forget it. He's not hosting the Academy Awards. That's what his people say. They just announced it earlier today. He didn't want to be known as perpetually hosting the uh, Academy Awards. He doesn't want to go down that road again. He's not doing it. I hear that, Chris. You got your, you've got your successful strip show on TV. What do you need that for? <laughs> Can I say another thing perfectly honest with you? I don't like the boondocks. <laughs> I was trying to give it a chance and stuff, but you want to know what? At the end of the day, the best adult cartoon ever in the history of TV. Hold on. The Family Guy. Stewie and that dog and that bomb family. What? What? I mean, the Simpsons were good, but the Family Guy is great. By the way, a shout out to everybody who um, might be in Secaucus tomorrow. Iman is going to be signing new uh, uh, copies of her new book at Sam's Club tomorrow in Secaucus, 300 Park Place. And Iman, the supermodel, will be there at 12.30 p.m. From noon to 12.30. Oh, my gosh. That's exactly two books. <laughs> you know, I've, I've done book signings. I know how that goes. She'll get two books and everybody else will be standing there mad. <laughs> From tw noon to 1230. Well, I can tell you what her book is called. She was here on the show earlier. Hold on a moment. I'm going to tell you what she said to me when I asked her about David Bowie and the homosexuality. Uh -oh. And also Iman and lesbianism. Hold on. It's called How you doing? The Beauty of Color, Iman, the Ultimate Beauty Guide for Skin of Color. And this woman was a multimillionaire when she retired from modeling. You know, her pop is a, or was, a was a an embassy a diplomat. A diplomat. And her mom, a doctor. So she grew up with privilege. Yes, she did have servants in the house. And yes, she does have a live-in nanny for her five-year-old daughter. She's got a 26-year-old and a five-year-old. Her 26-year-old's father is um, Hayward Nelson. No, wait, no, that's Dwayne from What's Happening. 
Spencer Haywood. Yes. Spencer Haywood. And the marriage just ended because it ended. I asked her. She's 50 years old and she's got a five year old. Wow. wow. Yeah, exactly. Wow. <clears throat> Doing wow. the damn thing. Wow. And the Iman Cosmetics are making her more wealthy today than she ever was through modeling. And, of course, we all know David Bowie, her husband of 13 years. Ow. Uh, we know his, yes, well, his reputation preceded him even before she met him. But, Iman said, I asked her about other men, homosexuality and stuff like that. And she said, first of all, that their marriage is a monogamous marriage. They don't, they're not swingers. It's not an open marriage. They're married like traditionally married people. And second of all, by the time she met David, all of the nuttiness with the groupies, whether they be man or woman, was out of his wow. system. And he was just ready to settle down and be a man. Like, like the Ozzy and Harriet, he was ready to settle down. I asked her if she'd ever had a lesbianic tryst. She said no. Uh, but she said, of course, being in the modeling um, business, you know, of course she's been hit on and stuff, but that's not her thing. And in case you want to know, because I asked her about friendships, I always like to know who the star's friends are and stuff like that. Her best friend in the whole wide world, she was the maid of honor at her wedding and everything, Beth Ann Hardison, Kadeem Hardison's mom. <clears throat> Beth Ann is, a, um, uh, is an agent. Wendy, I'm a black woman, and I have to say that Aubrey is sexy, hot to death for a white girl. She's banging. Mm. Talked a little bit about making of the band today. Boy, is that Jennifer Lopez stupid. <laughs> I'm still thinking about that. I, I want to divorce her. <laughs> On the grounds of what the hell is the matter with you? Okay, so Jennifer, they're saying, sent, oh, please don't let this be true. Oh, gosh. Sent a, a welcome the baby to the world gift, the baby Violet, Ben Affleck, and Jennifer Garner's baby. Sent a basket full of baby goodies up to the compound. Shut up. <laughs> exactly. Let it go, Jennifer. If I were Mark Anthony, I would divorce you on the grounds that you don't even know how to be married. You don't even know what it takes to be married. The, 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 there's, there's certain basic rules. And don't stop looking at the radio like, oh, Wendy, you're insecure. No, I'm not. That's reality. No exes. What? No room at the wedding. No room at house parties. Definitely no money in the budget to send some damn baby from, from you know, what? Unless it's your ex from eighth grade. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Wendy, great interview with Iman. Invite her to the Dons and Divas party. She's truly fabulous. I did, and guess what? She told me in the back that she is going. Uh, she's leaving the country for the holiday, uh, December 20th. The same day that Mary J. Blige's CD comes out. She's our diva. Terrence Howard, we're talking about you. Terrence is set to star as Thurgood Marshall. Isn't that a fabulous wow. biopic? Mm, nice. Or would they call it a biopic? Biopic. Isn't that a great? Yes. I think that's terrific. NAACP lawyer. Um, it's it, The film is going to be about the landmark Brown versus Board of Education case in 1954. So it's not exactly a biopic. It's not exactly about Thurgood Marshall, but it's, a, it's about this case. I think this is great. I think it's great. It seems like just the other day I was saying about Terrence Howard, I was talking with the girls in the office, like, he's so good when he gets in stuff. Why is he always the bridesmaid and never the bride? You know what I mean? And now, all of a sudden, like overnight, <clears throat> he's getting his comeuppance. Hello. Shout out to my girl, Keisha Cole. Shout out to everybody in Brooklyn. Keisha will be repping on New Year's Eve. This place in Brooklyn called The Rain Lounge. It's going to be open bar and whatnot. And they're giving away a mink to a woman. I don't know what you have to do to qualify for that mink. <laughs> 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 but with Don Pooh and Diamond at the helm, y'all just don't know. <laughs> just jokes, Poo Poo. Happy holidays. New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Mm. Keisha Cole, Brooklyn. That's hot. That's hot.
A lot of times singers, especially singers of her caliber, you know, she's gone from zero to 60 in no time at all. Right? Normally, a singer like this would be in Manhattan on New Year's Eve, doing something in Manhattan. You know, I'm not doing a Barrow uh, club. But Club Rain is nice. Have you ever been there? It's a nice place. Nice place. Really, really, really nice. So Keisha Cole is going to be performing there in Brooklyn. <clears throat> Let's go to Yvette on line four. I think we lost Yvette. Yeah, what is wrong with the telephones? <laughs> I think we lost every single call. Sandra from Brooklyn wanted to win tickets for her 22nd birthday to Dons and Divas. I got those tickets coming up. Chrissy was on line six. She's 26. She wants to ask a question about the the um, the master cleanse. She, she's doing it too. Malik in Brooklyn is a nurse at a hospital and just wanted to talk. And then Yvette wanted to talk about my trip to Berlin. What lines have you got on? Oh, line four? Nah. I got five and six. Let's go. Five. Okay, let's go for line five. You know what? Let's just give away the ticket, tickets to the Dons and Divas extravaganza. We can do it right now. Wendy, Wendy. Hello? Yeah, what's good? Uh, you play a player. Let me just ask you a couple <laughs> questions, okay? I got tickets All for right. the Dons and Divas. I want to give them away now. No doubt. Yeah, I'll give you a pair. And I got some more uh, for this hour also. So what's your name? Malik. Oh, this is Malik. Yeah, this is me. Hey, Malik. So, and, what hey. Do you, and what do you do? I'm a nurse. Oh. At North Shore Hospital. Oh. <laughs> Don't you get tired of, of nurses being categorized as a feminine uh, career choice? No, I don't. I don't. I got into it after my father got sick, so I'm just doing it because I love it. Oh, my gosh. I got to have you at my party. Oh, I love a caring man. Okay. You, are you married? Uh, I'm somewhat, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Malik? Yeah. Are you married? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How long you been married? About eight months. You just met a new girl, didn't you, eight months ago? No, nah, I, well, we on the air, right? Yeah, of course. No. <laughs> well, I don't have anything to say when the mics are closed. No, all right. No, I got married for, um, you know, help a friend out. A green card situation? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> how, much, how much did you get paid for that? What happened? How much did she pay? What happened? <laughs> how, how much did she, did you get, did you make off that uh, marriage? Oh, uh, no. She lent me, I think, $10,000. Yeah. And then, and, and then you married her. And then she keeps her green card, but you have to pay back the money? No. Oh, so then she didn't lend it. She yeah, gave she it. she gifted it to me. Yeah, she gifted it to me. That, yeah, that's the going rate for ma marrying somebody for a green card. Now, do you, do you have sex with her? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> do you have sex with anyone? What happened? Do you have sex? What happened? <laughs> hey, Malik, I want to see you at my Dons and Divas. All right. You won't be the only one marrying for money in there. Oh, all right. There'll be, there'll be plenty of women on the stroll looking to do the same thing. So I could do it again in two years. Uh, oh, is that your free man in two years? It's a business, <laughs> oh, it's a business room. <laughs> exactly. Now, um, in about one year and eight months, will you be looking for your next mark? I may, mean, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Well, why not? You have kids? No, nah, not at all. Okay. No kids. Mm -hmm. Well, you're 29. I mean, you you know you'll be you know potent for you know the rest of your life. Damn you, men. No, <laughs> so no. you can probably make a business out of this for about the next eight years. Yeah. I'm, the, you the, know, buy I'm, you a, buy you a house with the profits. No, nah, I'm I'm gonna like finish up school and you know give that all up and just <laughs> I'm gonna be a practitioner about a you know. Oh. <laughs> He's got goals and dreams, Malik. Yeah. Damn you. All right, let's give Malik some tickets for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. All right, hey, hey, Malik, hold on a moment. And don't forget, it's the black party, okay? I know, I got that. Okay, Malik lives in right. Brooklyn. If you live in Brooklyn and you want the number, um, you can go on my website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com. Let's get back to the gossiping. Oh. While, while I am in Berlin, can we make sure that somebody changes the carpet in the office and in the hall right outside, <laughs> paints the back of my door black, <laughs> Replaces the ceiling tiles that are missing, fixes the microphones, we get a new fax machine, 
we need a new phone system for the request line. And can somebody please replenish the paper seat covers in the bathroom? They haven't been there for about two months. I'm tired of squatting and splashing. <laughs> you, you'll be back in, what, six months? Oh, no. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to Germany as the main character in my book, Ritz Harper. Ooh. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm gonna, but yeah, from the moment I leave the house, the car comes and picks us up. I'm gonna fly on the plane as Ritz and everything, and she is a demanding bitch. <laughs> oh, she's on the radio. That's about the only thing that we have in common. Past that, ugh, I, but she's the lead character in my series of novels, Ritz Harper. It's Wendy Williams presents Ritz Harper. Drama is her middle name. On Random House. I'm in the Random House family. It'll be out um, in June of 2006. So I'm going before, like, there's like 500 people. Some very influential people from around the world, from the Bertelsmann family. The Bertelsmann own Random House, Sony, and all like that. This is the end of the year meeting. And they, they fly in some of their product. Last year it was Alicia Keys. When I say product, I mean us, you know. We, we work for them. I mean, we're, we're the product. You, you understand what I'm saying? So I don't know who's performing from Sony. I don't know who will be there this year. Um, I know that each year they fly in two authors and they've never flown in a black. And so they ask this year for a black. <laughs> and somehow, of all the black authors in all the, the United States, somehow my name got brought up. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm being whisked off to Germany. I'm leaving on Monday. And uh, last year, it was Mary Higgins Clark. And Harlan Coben, do you, do you follow, if you follow books, then you know both of those names. Uh, they were the authors from the Random House family that went last year. So I'm going this year, and the fellow that is going, uh, there's two authors per year. Uh, he's Indian, and I don't know his name. But I just know that he lives in the United States. <laughs> and um, he's, he's, he's the big cheese as far as the book world in, in India. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And, and I decided that the best way to pitch my book uh, to them, um, to give them, and I already have my book deal. So the wow was already done, but I need everybody in the room to be enthusiastic about my project. All 500 of them. So I'm going to dress as Ritz Harper and Wendy Williams will not be on this trip. Wow. That's right. <laughs> and if I don't know, you call me Miss Harper. <laughs> oh, she's a mess. Ugh. You know, I love her. I feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for her. You know, because behind every demanding diva, there is a lonely, somewhat pathetic side of life. I mean, the drama unfolds in June. Shout out to my Random House family. I'm very excited. Shout out to Car Carol Mackey. Hey, Carol. Daddy Yankee, everybody, is launching a sneaker collection. He signed to Reebok, Reebok and it's called Reebok DY. And it's going to include sneakers, actually, and um, some apparel and accessories. DY is set to launch in spring of 06. Oh, he'll unveil his sneaker, and I'll unveil Ritz Harper. Mm. He'll also be featured in the Reebok ads, I Am What I Am. Good for Daddy Yankee. Tevin Campbell. I <clears throat> Yeah. So he just celebrated his 29th birthday. And he's joined the Broadway cast of Hairspray, which means that Tevin Campbell will be uh, in town to not just hear us talk about him, but to come and talk with us about him. We haven't seen him since Can We Talk? And that was when he was talking to girls, of course. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, he's going to take over the role of Seaweed J. Stubbs. Now, I'm not familiar enough with Hairspray to know who that is, but it's a role currently um, being done by Chester Gregory II. Chester is scheduled to leave December 11th, and Tevin is scheduled to <laughs> perform <laughs> beginning December 13th. 
I gotta get tickets for Hairspray. Yes. I gotta get tickets. Oh, gosh. Shout out to Elisa Payne holding down the office. Elisa, Tevin Campbell on Broadway, December 13th. Hairspray. We need him on the show. He just celebrated his 29th birthday. In her mind, she's saying, how do you expect me to book him after you just talked about him? I don't know. That's why you're the professional. That's why they write you up in the new Vibe magazine as the, the guest booker of the Wendy Williams experience. Yeah, she got a full page article in there. Pictures and air thing. Oh, boy. There's a new television show coming on. I'm going to check it out. It's going to be on TBS. I haven't watched TBS in so long. I have to be refreshed onto where the hell it is. <laughs> Courtney Cox and her husband, David Arquette. That, that show, Daisy Does America. That's my kind of show. You know, crazy white girl. She's from England. She'll do anything to make a big splash in the United States. She gets into all sorts of situations. Uh, here's what Courtney says about her. She's like Lucille Ball meets John Cleese. There's something really endearing and disarming about a beautiful woman who wants to make a fool of herself. Yeah, I don't mind watching it. I'm going to check the show out. I have no idea when it starts. Don't ask, please. <laughs> you know what? And congratulations to Katie Corrick. And oh well, Matt. And oh well, Al. Jealous? Because sisters be doing it for ourselves. <laughs> now, this Katie, right? She's already in a contract. And we, we talked about this uh, several weeks ago. She's in a contract for $65 million. It's a four and a half year deal contract. Earning her, they say, about $14 million a year. And the contract is up in 2006. So when the contract is up, the question is, will Katie renew? Will she leave? What will happen? Do they love her enough to, do a, to give her what she wants? Nothing like being spotted at a secret meeting to make people really want to mm, resign you quick. So here's Katie seeing that her deal is up. Smart woman doing it for herself. She's spotted. In a meeting with the CBS. Now, mind you, Katie is with um, NBC. And she was spotted recently, a few months ago, actually, with Les Moonves, who's the big boss over at CBS. And then the word got back to the bosses at NBC. Katie was with Les. Katie was with Les. What's it about? What's it about? What's it about? What's it about? It started driving them crazy. So what did they do? Then they, they sat and they waited like they do, you know, that, like they do to us women. Like, nah, she's probably meeting them for, you know, <laughs> something that women are good for, you know, them broads or whatever, whatever. <laughs> Always putting our business head on the back burner, thinking that we're meeting about everything else except for the business at hand. So she's 48. She's already America's highest paid journalist. Then the buzz after that meeting with Les, is that she was going to jump ship from NBC and replace Dan Rather for the CBS Evening News. And what did NBC do? They jumped up. And they're now going to be paying her in her new contract $25 million a year to stop her from leaving. And that's making Al Roker, who's making $2 million a year, upset. And Matt Lauer, who's making $8 million a year, see red. <laughs> see ya. You know, I love when women play men out of their game, out of their position. <laughs> Bye. I, I just love that. More power to you, Katie. <clears throat> and Roker, you're black, and I can choose, you know, black. But you know what? I choose my sex over, over that. Because too many women, black, women just get run over all the time in, in, in America, in corporate, in life. <clears throat> we have to pay more to get our tires changed. You know, and this is not a color thing. This is a sister with an R. All of us. All of us, ladies. I love to see women do well. And I'm so glad that I'm mature enough not to be a hater. Because many of us are. And I'm glad that the women who led me, you know, taught me not to be a hater. Because I was definitely poised to be. <laughs> you know, back to me. You know what I'm saying? 
you try to figure out how you're going to make it in your game and stuff, and you get your first professional job, the first thing you see is who you're going to take out. Oh, please, come on, let's talk for real. Who am I going to take out? True. Right? True. It's true. At my first big job, the job that I learned the most professionalism was when I was working at the Lip Station. Carol Ford, Yvonne Mobley, and Ann Tripp. Those were my girls. Not my girls like we were friends because I was a newbie. But I learned so much from them that they will never understand in terms of there's enough money for all of us. I mean, they never said this. They never sat down and like said this to me or anything like that. But I would just sit back and observe. And they always treated me well. Not like the young girl about to come in and take over. And not like, um, you know, get out of the way, Carol. Ann is coming through. Yvonne, get out of the way. I'm Carol Ford. And not Wendy. There's no place for that. Who's this noob? You know what? I'm, nothing, nothing like that. Like, like I had the best teachers, and they don't even know. I learned from observation. I don't like to be like you know a, a, a puppy all up into somebody's ankle like that. You know, people find you to be a pain in the ass. The best way of learning is by observation, and I learned so much from them. And I guess that's why right now, you know, I'm able to fully. I mean, I got basically all girls working around me, and I love it. I love it. Efficiency. And hopefully I'm teaching, like like you girls. Like, you know what? Don't be backbiting on the women. Be, ca be careful. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to walk into it in a backbiting type situation. And there are women out there that will give you a chance. And there are women out there who are, are doing it better than the men, like Katie Corkle. Oh, I'm so happy for her. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful, Katie. It's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I don't think Katie has a black friend in her life. I bet she doesn't even have a black maid. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, she seems really white, white, white. But this is not a color thing right now. This is a sex thing. Mm -hmm. And girl power. Go on, Katie. Oh, please, Goose, with that. It's time to take a break, <laughs> mess. All right, let's pick up a winner behind the scenes. Then we're going to take a break. And i got to pick up a winner for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. And then when I come back... From the break, I actually have some tickets for Color Purple as well. We're going to round out uh, uh, this show and then go home. i got to go home and pack my wigs. Ritz Harper doesn't wear my hair color or my hair length. i got to pack all my sunglasses, my red lipstick, and all my power suits. <laughs> She's got a flight to catch on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it where you got it, everybody. The Wendy Williams experience continues till 7 on 107.5 WBLS. What's up? This is New Edition. New Edition. That's right. You're listening to the bonus hour right the here bonus. on 107.5 WBLS. Yes. That's right, baby. I am actually hosting um, a big show in Atlantic City at the Trump Taj Mahal in January. Check the Trump schedule. I think it's January 15th. It's Keith Sweat, Belle Biv DeVoe, and... Um, the, the original members of En Vogue. It's going to be a nice show at the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. I think it's January 15th. As a matter of fact, I'm almost sure it's January 15th. Oh. We got a winner for the Dons and Divas extravaganza tickets. Andrew Taylor of Agentown, New Jersey. My homeboy. He picked up his passes. He called behind the scenes. Congratulations, Andrew. The winning continues all next week. Every hour... Um, you know, when we're doing the national show and then I come into my local breaks and I talk to you guys at the bottom of the hour, I talk to you guys like you understand radio, but you know what? The audience is very, very savvy. You know, when I talk to the national audience and then when I come and I talk to you somewhere around like 25 after the hour and we talk for like 10 minutes and then we play a song and then we hear the claps and then, then the class is back in session and everybody's here. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, um, every hour next week, every day. I'll be giving away Don's and Divas extravaganza passes. And I know it's a best of show, but I got to work very early this morning. I saw the snow, but I had a lot of, um, you know, pre-recording to do, including pre-recording of me saying, call now to win the Don's and Divas extravaganza. So don't think that it, that's some kind of hoax because I'm on vacation. That's actually, um, I've already designed the show. I thought about you, my honeys. Here, we can put this in the book. So that Andrew can put that. What do you all know about Michael Jackson drinking himself to death? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but why is Angela telling me this? She writes in big, bold writing, Wendy, what is happening with Michael Jackson drinking himself into a presumed death? Angela, get information, exclamation, exclamation. I don't know. I haven't heard this. Shout out to QB. 
says, Wendy, I don't think you should hold back on your views. Your bluntness may scare these people, these people and other airheads who are out here living the same life. A lot of women respect your opinion and you may be able to knock some sense into their heads if you get them at them the good old fashioned Wendy way. I listen to you because you're raw, not because you're soft. So don't soften up now. And I think indirectly she named the rapper that she was sleeping with. You know what? She might have, and I heard what she said. I can't even dwell on the rapper. I'm just dwelling that I don't want her at my party. <laughs> Keep that mess. Right? She'll be the first one coming up to me talking about, hi, <laughs> all in my face. I love your soul. <laughs> Oh, I think I picked up the wrong drink. Wendy, this is your drink. I think I picked up here. This is yours. I think I picked up the wrong drink. You know what I'm saying? No, you can keep it. It's okay. I told her, and she's probably the first one to wet up the tip of a blunt, you know, in the cipher. Passing it around with all that mess sitting on the tip. Meanwhile, she passes it to you, and you're the one who, if you're like me, you bite the inside cheek of your mouth when you get nervous, so you always got something going on in there. <laughs> just waiting for her germs to hit the blunt to hit your cheek and then that's it for you oh my gosh too many ways too many ways eee. Savoy magazine is closing down I, I mentioned it earlier I know you're not surprised you don't read the magazine I mean a lot of people did read it but unfortunately not enough more people read Ebony magazine and Jolie Magazine, which is uh, the Vivica Fox Magazine, there's two issues out. Uh, the first one, we had Viv on the cover. The one on newsstands now has Sierra. The third one, I don't know who's on the cover, but they're introducing something new in Jolie Magazine, and that is um, that girl, Wendy Williams. She's doing an advice column for them. So um, I think what Wendy's going to do is she's going to, you know, from the advice hour on her radio show, she's going to then take, you know, she gets so many facts and she can't possibly answer them all on the radio. So then she's going to take the same crazy advice that she gives, you know, as raw and blunt as it is. And um, she's now teamed up with Vivica Fox. Sisters be doing it for ourselves. All right. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, no, I told that story earlier. Let's move on. I know when you did the same thing. Nicole Richie. Oh, gosh, gosh, okay. Murder, Inc. is this close to finalizing their distribution deal with the Warner Music Group? Good for them. Hey, Goddies. Hey, Ashanti. Ashanti, people say it looks like you're gaining weight. Yes. You're a short girl. You really can't afford to pack it on too, too tough. You know? She was stressed, the, the trial. You know what I mean? She was stressed. I guess she'll lose it. I was checking out the apple bottom jeans. Speaking of Ashanti, I know she's got a line of the mud jeans. Um, but I was checking out the apple bottom jeans. And um, I have to tell you something. They're finally making stuff that a grown woman can wear. Like, you know, because only and shout out to the 15 year olds. It's you all that belong walking around with a big apple on your behind. You know, that's not, you know... I guess Apple Bottom was strictly catering to you all, but now all of a sudden it's like Apple Bottom's got the memo that, you know, we all, you know, women over 30, women over 35, uh, we like to um, feel cute too. We just don't want to wear an apple on our behinds. And I, I think I need to pay closer attention to Apple Bottom jeans. Yeah, shout out to everybody over there. We've finally gotten the memo. I love that. Okay, this is what I got to do before I go. I can't believe I'm leaving, fleeing the scene with... I got at least an inch worth of gossip that I've not gotten through and information. I don't know where all the... I was talking about the fight with Destiny's Child earlier. I can tell you in a nutshell what it is because I, I would be crazy to leave for a week and not share this with you. Okay, so... Kelly had no idea, according to sources, that Beyonce wasn't going to show up at the American Music Awards. So there's Kelly going up there. Crickets, please. Accepting the <laughs> award. I love Kelly, but it's because I'm so conditioned to seeing her with the rest of the girls that I, I'm i not giving her enough credit as a person on her own. And maybe that's me being small-minded and short-sighted. And, and keep that going. And Michelle. <clears throat> I mean, Michelle, as far as I'm concerned... Don't you say a word. 
but um but they're both they're both you know and then and then Kelly did the whole award season mm-hmm. by herself. And though she looked beautiful, hair beautiful, gown beautiful, <clears throat> although what doesn't look beautiful on a size zero with a, with a big booty? Mm-hmm. A lot. You need curves, is what you're supposed to say. A lot doesn't look beautiful on the skinny minis <clears throat> with a big booty, but only big booty for a little girl. You know, <laughs> that's a big little hard muscle butt like Tisha Campbell from Martin. Oh. <laughs> you see how that baby tore that body up, honey? What, ha- what happened to that? Right? <laughs> what happened, mommy? Not that Tisha Campbell looks bad. Shout out to her family in Newark. Hey, I see you. <laughs> but you remember what Tisha looked like. And that wasn't curvy like a feminine woman. That was like athletic, like she's running track and doing crunches and all like that. Then she had the baby and whoo. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Goose. Damn. Caller number 10 on the phones and we can answer them right here, Goose, okay? Is going to win a family four pack of tickets for, um, well, this is a great night, okay? I'm hosting the night. We're going to have a pre-show reception over at B. Smith's restaurant here in in Manhattan. That's my friend Barbara and her husband, Dan. B. Smith's <clears throat> restaurant. And then we're going to all go over and see a color purple together. We're not going to sit together like a class trip. This just happens to be a night that I'm hosting. And so you win a family four pack. This is a lot of tickets. This is a great way to save on your holiday budget by giving this to somebody else. All right. So you're calling number one and you're calling number two and you're calling number three and you're calling number four. And you're calling number five, you're calling number six, you're calling number seven, you're calling number eight. How you doing? You're calling number nine, you're calling number ten. Oh, I mean, you're calling number ten. Congratulations. Oh, my God. There you go. I'll see you at... Unbelievable. I'll see you at Color Purple, and I'll see you at B. Smith's. What's your name? Hello? Oh, no. Hello? Sir? Ho? I mean, hello? Somebody kidnapped him? happen sprint phone <laughs> <laughs> all right let's take another 10 yeah uh, call it number one oh, uh, you're calling number 11 yeah. hello hello H- H- hi hi how are you fine thank you i don't feel right giving them to uh, uh, this lady why mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. And then we don't know who don't you see mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. so what you gonna do you got one minute yeah, lady, I'm glad that you listened. I'm glad that you called. Take care. Bye-bye. I'm sorry. I can't do that. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, people might accuse me of being a sexist. Maybe they think that I pressed the button and hung up on him or something like that because I was just talking about how, you know, women are the bomb. Okay. I need... What's her name again? Asia. Asia. To just if she just stays behind for fifteen minutes, Asia, I'm sorry. <laughs> Asia, I'm sorry, Asia. Asia. Asia, I'm sorry, girl. You know you my girl. <laughs> Asia, if you just stay for like fifteen more minutes and come the phones and find that man, and if you, he never said his name, but he sounded Caucasian, and he sounded well. He sounded Caucasian, and he sounded, um, well, <laughs> and he might not have been either, but he had the sound. Just please comb the phones and try to, yeah, for 15 minutes. Then if he doesn't, he didn't say a name, but I feel bad. Yeah, he did the hanging up. I didn't do that. But then again, it could have been the radio station phone system, to be fair. But thank you, Asia. If you don't find a winner, then just give the prize back back to Goose, and we'll give it away when we get back from um, when I get back from Germany. Good damage control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't. You know, I can't. I, that'd have me tossing and turning all night. All right, look. Your aircraft is waiting. <laughs> oh, well, somebody give me my Ritz Hopper makeup and wig and, and outfit and stuff. <laughs> You all, I love you for listening today. Don't forget, it's all best ofs next week, but all through the best ofs, every hour, I'll be giving away Dons and Divas extravaganza passes. Don't forget, for the most comprehensive website regarding Dons and Divas, log on to my website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com. You'll see telephone numbers of venues that have, and there's also a button that you navigate your way to, and you hit click that button and purchase your passes, and then I'll see you in the building on December 22nd. And maybe by the time I get back, my Don will allow me to announce who the hell he is hello all right you all hold down the fort while i'm gone 
And I love you all for listening. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a safe trip. Thanks. The Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed.